Denver, Michigan, a sold-out house as always. College football on ABC, presented by Best Buy, and a sold-out Michigan Stadium to see if the team can come back from what happened a week ago. Welcome, everybody. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, and Bonnie Bernstein. Last week, everybody knows now, an epic upset by Appalachian State over the Wolverines here on their hallowed ground. Now, you don't mind being on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You don't want to be the guy trying to tackle Dexter Jackson on one of his two touchdown runs for the Mountaineers in that two-point upset. So, guys, it's a new week for Lloyd Carr. And, Greece, how long does the hangover last? Well, hell week is over. It lasts week to your next ball game. The leaders of this Michigan team have got to get them back on track. They've got a lot to play for. They've got the Ohio State game. They've got the Big Ten title. And they've got the Rose Bowl. At the end of the year, you look back on this and you say, it wasn't pretty after the first week, but it turned out to be a pretty good season. We're going to talk about Oregon with Paul in a minute. But first, Chad Henney, the senior quarterback, talked about how this week has gone. The mood of the team, uh, it, it's, it's been down. Uh, obviously, we uh, didn't play well and uh, didn't play to our capability last week. but. Uh, I feel that we're coming back, we bonded, we practice a lot better than we did last week, and uh, everybody just wants to get back on the field and uh, prove ourselves. And Paul, they meet a team today whose offense is very similar to the one that beat them last week. Well, if you saw the Appalachian State game, <laughs> you think you may see a duplicate offensively now, because they, when you talk about Oregon's offense, they have two excellent running backs, plus a third running back who's the quarterback, Dennis Dixon. And this guy is legitimate. He is a great player. Michigan won the toss. They want the football. They want that bad taste out of their mouth as quickly as possible, apparently. So that means Matt Evanson will tee it up to kick off a junior Hemingway. And Carlos Brown back deep for Michigan, and we're underway in the big house. And it'll go to the five to Carlos Brown. Brown across the 20 and out to about the 23-yard line. And that's where Chad Henney, who we already heard from, We'll go to work. The senior who's on the verge of breaking every Michigan passing record. If he stays healthy, he should get them all. His 39th straight start, longest active in college football right now. Just one touchdown pass shy of John Navarre's school record of 72. So he'll come out with a veteran offense, of course, led by Mike Hart and Jake Long, the other captain on the offense, the left tackle. So Michigan's got the football first. They'll have it at the 24-yard line. That's where they'll line up against the Ducks defense. Michigan in the familiar maize and blue and the Ducks in all white. One of about 50 uniform combinations for Oregon. And it's Mike Hart straight up the middle. Broke one tackle and gets out near the 28-yard line. So let's check the Michigan starting offense and Chad Henney will do the honors. Chad. Starting off with our offensive line, we got big Jake Long on the left side that uh, takes over leadership. Then we got Michael Hart in the backfield, playmaker of ability, Adrian Arrington, Mario Manningham, and Greg Matthews on the outsides. And they are on the outside, two one way, one the other. Hart the single setback on a second down and six. And it's Mike Hart straight up the middle. Hurdles a man out near the 34-yard line. He might have a first down. Pick up of six, and he's going to have the first down, I'm pretty sure. Mike Hart, who had a big game last week despite a bruised thigh that kept him out of much of the third quarter. What Michigan wants to do today is protect their defense. Their offense scored a lot of points last week, but their defense with the spread option offense that Appalachian State used scored a lot of points. The same offense, as Paul mentioned, is Oregon, so they want to protect their defense, eat up some of the time, take it off the clock. Two tight ends set again with Carson Butler setting up on a wing to the top of your screen. Both wideouts near side on first down, and it's Hart on a play fake. And the pass, and Manningham's got a head of steam down the sideline. I beg your pardon, it's Butler, the tight end. He's moving so fast, I thought it was 86 instead of 85. <laughs> Pick up of 30. Butler lines up behind, and he's just going to slide behind the line of scrimmage. They're going to fake the ball to our right and then come back, and he's wide open. A nice, crisp throw and three good plays to start for Michigan. All the way down to the 35-yard line. So taking the football is paid off. Michigan received the opening kickoff, and they're down to the Ducks' 35-yard line. And now Hart spins his way for about four more yards against the Oregon defense. It's going to be set by their head coach, Mike Lottie. Mike. 
Starting with the defensive line, where it all begins, uh, the guy that leads that group, Will Tukwafu, uh, is only a sophomore, a great player in fall camp. At linebacker, A.J. Tuatelli, one of our captains voted on by his peers and a playmaker, pure and simple. At safety and leading that defensive secondary, which is thought to be the strength of our defense, Patrick Chung. And there's the group that's trying to slow down Michigan right now with a second down and six. Both tight ends now on the wide side. The throw this time does go to Manningham. And a flag down. Might have a holding out there. And I think it's going to be on Carson Butler, the tight end. It is on Carson Butler. He's out there to make a block, and he wraps his arms around the defender's neck. <laughs> They're going to call that most times, aren't they? No. <laughs> There's the holding call. Bill Lemonnier, the second week in a row. We've had Bill as our head referee. Let's take a look at the game plan, guys, as they back up the Offense holding call and the penalty. 85. For Michigan offensively, like I said, they need to control the ball, help their defense. And for Oregon, it, it just is very simple. They have to stop the run. They have to stop Hart. They have to force this team to throw the football. And Henny has effectively so far a wide open tight end on one. Manningham there. That was a good looking pattern without the holding call. Let's back it up to second down and 11 now, back at the 36 yard line. And now, Moondrous, the fullback in the lineup for the first time in front of Mike Hart. Chad Henney steps back to call an audible, and Oregon almost jumped offside. But you can see they're blitzing, right? <laughs> nice play fake. Henney's going to go deep. Intercepted in the end zone. And bringing it out is Matthew Harper. Harper across the 20. Still going. Harper's got a convoy down the sideline. He's still on his feet across midfield into the 45-yard line. What a great return. 55 yards from the goal line. Huge turnover for Oregon. The, way, the thing about this, what I really don't understand, there's only one guy in the pattern. One man is in the pattern. And the whole defense, there were five guys back there. Take a look at this. It's a play-action pass, but watch this when you're downfield. Look at all the white shirts and only one blue. There's the blue. Manningham. Manningham never got to the inside. He couldn't get through his defender. And then Harper with a great run back to the 45-yard line of Michigan. Talk about a momentum breaker. And now the spread offense with Dixon throwing on first down. Complete to Garen Strong. And Strong going strong inside the 30-yard line. Down to the 28s. Let's go back one more time and look at the interception. Well, what happens is Henny sees the blitz. Watch the linebackers blitz, but he never sees the safety stay in the middle of the field. Now watch. Manningham get tangled up right there, and he never got to the inside. Normally, when you see a blitz, there's nobody in center field, but he didn't check after he blitzed. Johnson and Stewart both in the backfield, shifting. And on the option, Dixon keeps. It's got a wide open hole inside the 20, and he picks up eight down to the 19-yard line. Dennis Dixon, one of the captains, a senior. Signed by the Braves in the offseason, and his coach told us I wasn't crazy about the fact he wanted to play summer baseball, but he said he came back and he caught up in a hurry, and he looked great a week ago. He had 141 yards rushing and two touchdowns in the air. Mike Pilotti says he's magic with the ball in his hands. Second down in a yard. He's going to throw across the middle. He's got a man down to the 10-yard line and a first and goal. Brian Paysinger on the receiving end that time. You know what's happening here? You know, you, yeah, Dixon's a, a, an excellent quarterback, and he's got receivers, he's got running backs. But this offensive line, Michigan's not getting off the ball. They're holding him at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to have all day, he being Dixon, to throw the ball. You see the Ducks go without a huddle. It's not necessarily a hurry up at all. They just don't huddle. It's first and 10 at the 11-yard line. They marked it back at the 11, so they can get a first down inside the one. Now Dixon's ready. And he's going to hand it off. And going toward the end zone. And all the way to the end zone is Jonathan Stewart. Down at the one-yard line. And now it is going to be first and goal. <laughs> that, I'm going to take that guy. Mark Lewis, number 71, the guard pulled and went up into the hole. And I'm going to tell you what. You can hear it all over this place. Watch number 71, the right guard. It's going to come out right there. Watch 71. Bam! I mean, he gets a shot down about the four-yard line. 
Stewart's a load, too, about 230 pounds. And now it's Dixon trying to sneak it in, and I almost lost the ball down to the bottom of the pile. It, it, it did look like he dropped the ball. It looked like he was going to recover it. So it's going to be second down and goal. Take a look from the far side. Slipped a little bit. And then really had to scramble just to keep control of the football. So second down and goal. If you just joined us, Oregon, a 55-yard interception return from their own end zone by Matthew Harper set them up offensively in Michigan territory. They moved it down now to second down and goal. Dixon in the gun. It's Stewart to the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Just like that. I thought I heard a whistle before And there's the a play. flag down. There is a flag on the near side. That would be on the offense. No flag. False start. Four. Offense. Five-yard penalty. How huge, how huge might that be if they don't get the touchdown? Now they're going to have to earn it. They're going to move it out to the six-yard line. And it looked just that easy as Stewart went in standing up. And now Mike Bellotti and the guys have to rethink here. Catch your breath. Michigan came out, was moving the ball very well. One bad throw by Henney and a great return by Harper. Now Oregon's got it on the goal line inside the five, maybe getting seven points. Dixon fakes it to Stewart, wants to throw to the end zone. In traffic, incomplete. Broken up nicely by Donovan Warren, the freshman, number six. Good play by the young fella. I'll tell you what, Dixon is not afraid to fire that ball in. I mean, he has an awful lot of confidence in his arm. Watch his throw here. He doesn't hesitate. Look at this ball. That's a great strike down. Ooh. Just good defense. You had pressure on the quarterback. And coverage in the end zone. So now it's third and goal from the six. Three wide receivers will break out of that huddle. And Dixon's going to call a timeout. Yeah, he doesn't right, want to blow an opportunity right here. That's the right, right thing to do. 10-32, first quarter. We'll find out if the Ducks can take advantage of that interception with a big third and goal when we come back. I've always had this dream to be a car designer. Uh, from a very early age, I was drawing cars on every piece of paper I could find. And at age 11, I wrote Cadillac. And I was very interested in what was it that I needed to do to become a designer. I'm still following their advice. And my dream cars, they came true. Expensive brokers are shaking because E-Trade just introduced their completely re-engineered market trader. It's easy. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. Okay, heading to the Home Depot. Big event going on. Honey, promise me you won't go overboard. <laughs> right now at the Home Depot. Save big on flooring, appliances, windows, and much more. With no payments, no interest for 12 months on purchases of $2.99 or more with your Home Depot consumer credit card. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. She's an accident waiting to happen. But on September 21st, she's going to slip. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You all right? Yeah. And crash her way into your heart. Good luck, Chuck. Oh. Rated on September 21st. These six men are preparing for battle. These six women intend to bring it. And it all starts with a three-night event. Dancing with the Stars kicks off premiere week Monday, September 24th on ABC. This telecast is available on ABC HD, presented by DLP Picture Technology. Oregon, a week ago, was perfect against Houston in the red zone. Four for four, all touchdowns. Now they've Worked it all the way down to the one-yard line, but a penalty's backed him up to the six, where it's third and goal. And following the timeout, Dennis Dixon all alone in the backfield with five wide receivers at his disposal. That's a quarterback draw. They're going to throw a slip screen, try to get back to the line of scrimmage as Pacinger, and he didn't get anything. Nice job by the Michigan defense. Brandon Harrison made that play. And so Michigan holds, and as I said, that false start penalty killed him because they were in the end zone. Now they're going to have to kick a field goal. You're exactly right. Take a look. 
the touchdown. He's just going to throw it out here. Last week, Michigan was falling all over themselves to try and get in and make the tackle. This, this week, they get in and make the play. It just takes patience. So now Matt Evenson's going to try a field goal. He was two for two last week, 44 and 45. This will be a 23-yard kick. And it's up and good. So Oregon gets something out of the turnover. They much would have preferred the touchdown that they had, but it was taken away by penalty. They do get three after Henny threw that interception. Chad was doing well until that one throw. He'd like to have it back. He'll have a few more when we return. Sudden disability can blindside even the healthiest business. At Unum, our benefits not only help people get back on their feet, they keep your whole company running strong. Unum, better benefits at work. This presentation of ESPN's College Football on ABC brought to you by Best Buy. Get the knowledge to send them off to college right at Best Buy. Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. And Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Shem Beckler Hall, that's where we spend most of our time when we're here in Michigan, where the football team practices, of course. Shrine that stands as a testament to what Bo was all about. Coach for two decades here, ending his career with 194 wins at what is college football's winningest program. We still miss him. He's uh, been gone, what, 10 months? And it's weird to stand out here in our booth usually to do an on camera we didn't today because of the length of the first game and he would always be in the box right above us screaming down at us <laughs> while we were trying to work and I miss that so much I asked I asked Lloyd Carr yesterday I said it's Bowles building it's named after him but he's got an office there I said do you miss him what's it like he says his presence is still there that's right down to the five Carlos Brown on the return and Brown broke the tackle at the 25 nice second effort and got to about the 29-yard line as we check in with Bonnie Bernstein for the first time today. Bon? Brad, hi. Everybody wondering about Michigan's mindset this week. Well, after the loss to Appalachian State, Jake Long sent Chad Henney a text message. He said, how you doing, buddy? Henney said, boy, this was a wake-up call for me and for us. I'm still in shock. Now, keep in mind, Henny, Long, and tailback Mike Hart all put off the NFL a year to try to win a national championship for this team. That's why they held a players-only meeting on Monday, and according to Henny, they've righted the ship. They're playing hard today, you can tell, but the one mistake cost them three points. There's going to be a loss of a yard by the aforementioned Mike Hart. Nice play by Nick Reed, the defensive end for Oregon. Take a look at the X Factor for today's game, brought to you by City. Both defenses. Neither one showed up last week. It's time for both of them to play a little better. <laughs> well, they do. And you if you just take a look at Oregon's defense and what they're trying to do, they're going directly at Hart. They're not wasting any other time. In fact, that, that, on that last drive when Henny rolled out to the outside, there was nobody there. Everybody went after Hart. 
Second down and 11. They'll come after him again here, but he breaks it up the middle into the secondary, and Hart's got a first down. Big run out to the 45-yard line. Pickup of 17. Brad, one thing that they say about Hart is that he's had that great speed, but he's got great vision. Watch the moves that he makes when he gets to the hole. He sees it all. Here he sees it. Now he looks back to his left. There is the opening. He is in it. Now he's not going to outrun you, but just take a look. at. There's another move to the right, one back to the left, and he almost broke that last tackle of Harper's. He just picked up five more yards. 31 yards on five carries for Mike already. And he's a workhorse. Here he comes again, plows into the line. and got About three. It'll be second down and seven after we check in with Matt in New York. All right, Brad, here's a vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the day. Nebraska's first ever visit to an ACC town was a tense one, but late Zachary Bowman with an interception to salt it away for the Cornhuskers. To vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance, just log on to ESPN.com. All right, Matt, keep us posted on all the scores. I know you will throughout the day. Second down and seven here for Michigan as they near midfield again. Henny, quick slam. Manningham caught it on the run. Broke a tackle. Out. Cuts outside. He's got great speed and one blocker. Manningham inside the 20 and down to about the 17-yard line. Great catch and run. Little slant route. Manningham picks up some blockers and goes around. You've got to be able to run the ball. Michigan wants to run the ball against this defense to take time off the clock to protect their defense. But there's also some passes out there. Although this defense of Oregon's led the Pac-10 in, in, in pass defense each of the last two years. Michigan now goes back to two tight ends on a first down at the Ducks 17. Play action to Hart. Henny rolls. Wants to throw. Scans the field. Now decides to keep it himself. And he got about a yard, maybe. You look at the timeline of Michigan. They've lost three straight games for the first time since 79. All the misery. I was talking about Bo. Bo passed away the day before they played Ohio State after going 11-0. They were beaten by the Buckeyes for the fifth time in the last six meetings. Then came the trouncing in the Rose Bowl by USC. And then the unthinkable last week losing to Appalachian State in week one. A very good football team of Jerry Morris. And he did an excellent job. And Lloyd Carr said, you know what, I've never done this before, but I called him the next day to congratulate him because he didn't get a chance to do so on the field when the game was over last week. Mike Hart. And Hart stays on his feet, stays with it down to about the nine-yard line. You know, you talk about a classy move. You get beat by Appalachian State, the Division I AA champion for the last two years, so they're not a slouchy football team, and everybody's shocked. And so the airwaves and the newspapers are filled with Lloyd Carr stuff this week that isn't positive. Talk radio, sports talk yep. radio. Junk. And you know what? He's just been Lloyd all week. Yeah. I mean, he's the same guy as if he'd have won that game last week. Well, he's too classy a guy to start naming names and start pointing fingers. All he knows how to do is go back to work and win. Hart, left side, got a first down with second effort. I know you talked to Coach Moore this week, uh, Bob. I talked to Jerry Moore, and he says uh, in Boone, North Carolina, it's where we spend some of our time in the summer, and he says, I got a call from Lloyd, and he says, I wish I could have taped it. He said, and, and played it for our players. He said he was just as, as, as great a guy, and just all the good things that he could have said, he'd said very, very humble in losing. And, and said a lot of good things about Appalachian State and how well they played and they deserved to win and all the right stuff. As you said to Coach Carr yesterday, it wasn't good for Michigan or Michigan fans, but it was kind of a great day for football yes. last week because uh, a monumental upset like that gets everybody's attention in week one. That was Alex Mitchell, the right guard, trying to pull, and Still he pulled way down. too quickly. Just one other thing about Carr is, is Coach Carr is that he, you know, saying, as you said before, he has never done that before. Right. I mean, you know, when you do something like that, I, it's, it's not to make that guy feel good. It's that you respect that other coach. So Michigan now backed up to the 11-yard line on the false start by Alex Mitchell, who's been hampered with some injury problems, but back in there starting at guard today. Well, this is one of their problems that they had last week. Pre-snap penalties. And again, Henny stands up. Both wide receivers are to the near side after play action. That's what he's looking for. Throws instead to the tight end, Butler. And Butler's got it down to about the seven-yard line. You know, it's a final race before the chase field is locked in with three drivers still vying for two spots. 
Can Dale Jr. race his way into the chase? We'll find that out. Who will be in and who will be out? It all comes down to this. NASCAR Next Tail Cup Series Chevy Rock and Roll 400 at Richmond. It's tonight on ABC at 7 Eastern right after our football game. And we're revving it up here. We've had a 3 0 Oregon lead. But Michigan on the ninth play of their drive has second down and goal at the seven. Will be four wide receivers, and they're going to go out in the flat to Hart. Oh, boy. That's how you get your tailback killed. And Hart never did go down, but Tuatelli, the captain and the outside linebacker, let him know that he was there. A packed house, 201 straight games. This place has had over 100,000 people in it, as always. There's probably about 112 today as the Pac-10 and the Big Ten get together. Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein, and yours truly, Brad Nessler. Key play so far. Chad Henney had things going well until he threw a post, and Mario Manningham didn't get there, but Matthew Harper did. Ran it back 55 yards, and that set up the Ducks' only score, a field goal by Evenson. Third down and goal, Michigan. Henny. In the end zone's got a man, he got him. Touchdown, Adrian Arrington, who went airborne to pull that one down. Chad saw him all the way, and he knew he had to deliver it high because there was a guy in front of him, and he put it right where it had to be. You're exactly right. When he threw this ball, I thought it was going to be picked, but he threw it to the sixth floor. Up the elevator, Arrington went right behind the white-shirted defensive back, gets his foot in. That was just a great execution. That's about as fine a catch as you're going to see this week, I bet. I say we work on that in practice all the time. Go to the back end of the line, jump as high as you can, and I'll throw it up there. So Michigan's got an answer to the Ducks' field goal in the form of Chad Henney tying the record here at Michigan with his 72nd career touchdown. And Gleason recovers a fumble in the end zone. That's his first career touchdown. Wait, is that a Dr. Pepper? Oh, he's going to make the most of this one. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so he's glad you could attend. Oh, can you inside, believe this? We might be here all night. Is he really going to do this? Look at only Dr. Pepper has 23 flavors packed into one bold taste for those who make the most of everything. I've got Tom Murphy, MVP of the Sullivan Funeral. Congratulations, Tom. Woo, thanks, man. Feels Take good. us through it. Uh, well, I got the alert during the moment of silence. That must have been tough. No, uh, it was on vibrate. It was tough to focus with all the crying, but I stayed with it and traded my uh, fantasy running back and picked up a new receiver. Does it get better than this? Uh, well, if there's some roast beef at the reception, that'd be pretty sweet. All right, now back to the studio. Be an ESPN MVP. Only with VCast. Fantasy management, live game updates, personalized favorites, and commentary. Exclusively from Verizon Wireless. <laughs> Ooh, the never-ending pasta bowl is going on. Oh, you didn't know? No. I, 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 I figured that's why you were in such a hurry to get here. No, no, I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Olive Garden's never-ending pasta bowl is back with delicious new sauces like sausage and peppers marinara and smoked mozzarella alfredo. Pick any combination of sauce and pasta, then another. Try them all for just $8.95 plus endless breadsticks and salad. I'll have the penny with meat sauce followed by the five cheese marinara. No idea, huh? <laughs> Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Looking for an excuse to buy a new Vizio? At only 448, you don't have to make excuses. Go to Vizio.com and see how Vizio is making HDTV a possibility for everyone. Vizio. The NASCAR Nextel Cup Series moves to ABC tonight at 7 Eastern. The 25 greatest players in college football history, presented by IBM, coming in one week. IBM, getting it done. Ribbon panel of former coaches, former players, and media members voting on that will reveal number 25 through 1 over the course of the season, announcing the greatest player in college football on the last week of the regular season. This guy's not bad. He's the best Michigan's ever had now. 
tying John Navarre anyway with his 72nd career touchdown pass. Pretty impressive. He started from game one as a freshman and now a senior. That's, that's unbelievable. He started his first game his freshman year, won the Big Ten championship that year, and has started every game. Only true freshman quarterback in Big Ten history to ever do that, to win the league title. Here's a kick. Goes down, fumble at the one-yard line by Stewart. Stewart's a great kick return guy, despite the fact that he's a big fella. He's not going to get much out of this one, though, except a few bruises. He ain't going down easy. He's not. <laughs> he broke about six tackles, but then he got tackled by about six Wolverines. Let's check the Oregon starting lineup. And I'm going to do the honors, I think, for Oregon. We didn't have a chance the last time they had the football. Max Unger moved from tackle over to center, all packed 10 a year ago. So Oalu there at the guard is making his first career start, number 66. And the backs and receivers, we talked about Stewart. And how good he is. Williams led the team in receiving a year ago. Pacinger is the guy that paced them last week against Houston. And of course, the guy that runs the show is number 10, and that's Dennis Dixon, the senior quarterback. Out of San Leandro, California. Doesn't have as great a field position this time. Back to throw and completes it. Pickup of about four out to Garen Strong. What's uh, what's Oregon got to do game plan wise, fellas? <laughs> We know they run the spread option, so that's part of it. Well, they got to spread out the Wolverines like they like the uh, Appalachian State did last week and run up the middle. And I'll tell you, the offense just did a good job on that last drive to keep the defense off the field. The defense has got to do this three and out. And it's going to be tough against Oregon. He's going to go deep this time. He's got a man out there and got him in perfect stride. Brian Pacinger pacing down the sideline. Touchdown, Oregon. And no flag. I told you he's the guy that led the way against Houston, and he led everybody down the field on that one. An 85-yard touchdown pass. Greece, we have seen two perfect passes. One by Haney for a touchdown, and then this one by Dixon for a touchdown. On the outside. Outside comes in. They just do a little swing, and then Pacinger, 19, outruns Harrison, and a great throw by Dixon. He looked around a little bit and then saw he had single coverage and took a shot at it. And now they're going to go for two. With a big lineup, they get the two. Ed Dixon, the tight end on a direct snap with a two-point conversion. <laughs> Don't you love this? I've, I've love seen this. it all. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's 11-7, to 7, folks. And we're in Michigan. And the Ducks are in all white. Well, a shocked Michigan defense again. You know, Greasy said this. He said, you know, if you score against these guys, against Michigan, you get ahead. He said, this place goes quiet in a hurry. Yep. Well, it does. And it's not it's not that intimidating a place to play. Here's the direct snap right here. That's a tight end there. And he just takes it and runs to the left. <laughs> Ed Dixon, 6'5", 240. And he needed all of it and used all of it. And you can see the stunned look. I think they were surprised, much surprised. Well, a couple of things. I think they were surprised at the long touchdown pass. Then I think they were surprised they weren't kicking it. And, and then there was no quarterback. The tight end's going to take the snap. You saw the points allowed in the last three games by Michigan as the three losses all over 30 points. And now they've given up 11 in the first quarter here with 440 remaining. Ness, how many people you think are in the stands and look at each other and said, okay, what was that? What was that? <laughs> Who ran that ball? What was, what was that? And, and where did he come from? Maybe the Duck fans that made the trip from Eugene know <laughs> that he was going to run that. Well, this Oregon team led the Pac-10 in total offense last year. 423 yards a game last year. They had 473 in their win over Houston in week one. Even to the kick, and it's a high, short one. Somebody better hustle. It's going to go out of bounds anyway. And now the option is to make them re-kick or take it where it went out of bounds, which is actually yeah. before the 35. They're probably going to take the ball right there, I would guess. Yeah, they are. So they actually had three options. Take it where it went out of bounds, take it at the 35. Kick out of bounds, Oregon. Michigan elects to put the ball in play at the out-of-bounds spot. There you go. First down. Bill said it about the way I said it, <laughs> only he had a louder mic than I did. Yes. Here he is here. Pacing, you're just going to come to the outside and straight down the sideline. He's going to have a lot of time to throw this ball. Good protection, good protection, single coverage down the field. 
That was just a great throw. He had a chance to pat that ball twice back there he all day. He did, and coverage wasn't bad. Mike Hart, nice little sidestep in the hole and picked up about four more out to the 42-yard line. Before that play, I said, before that touchdown, I said, you know, the defense needs to get three and out. That time it was two and out. Yeah, but, but it was they two got, plays, they got 85 nine. yards. <laughs> he got eight points after it. That's why I think that Michigan's best defense is what's on the field right now. Mike Hart running the ball. Mike Hart running the ball because I don't, I'm sure that Michigan defense can't stop that spread option attack. Didn't last week, haven't done so far this week. Second down at six. Chad Henney play action. He's got a man wide open. Manningham again. First down. And he's down to the 41, almost the 40 yard line of Oregon. Got a did you know for you with Michigan having lost last week. And Bob said they still got a lot to play for because we haven't gotten in to the Big Ten championship or the Big Ten play at all. So they've got a lot to play for. But the last team to lose their opener and win a national title was Miami in 1983. Coach Schnellenberg. Oh, Howard. Howard went on to Louisville and started that program, got it going, and now he's at Florida Atlantic University. First down, Michigan at the 40. Hart. Boy, he's something to watch, isn't he? he uh, well, that line is doing a nice job, and he's got some holes there. He doesn't know whether to go with this one or that one. You know, I'm sure you guys have lamps in your house that have the three-way bulbs. <laughs> when Mike Hart's out of the lineup, it's one of those 50s. And when he's kind of banged up, he's like a 75. But when he's on and he's in that huddle, the whole Michigan offense is at that 100-watt deal. Well, yeah, but wouldn't you, like, Hart, wouldn't you just love to run over there on the left side with Long yes. and Kraus? They're, they're both All-Americans. Kraus is going to be an All-American this year. That is a big load on that left side. Mike gets a breather. Carlos Brown in the backfield for the Wolverines. First down. And he'll get the carry, and he does what Mike Hart would do. Go straight ahead, but he lost the ball, and that's something Mike Hart doesn't do. Michigan's fumbled. Jarris Bird has recovered. Wow, the second turnover now when Michigan had things going their way. They're stopping themselves. Oregon has had two turnovers. That's six takeaways for Oregon this year, and they haven't given it away once. Got a nice hole. Butler 85 gets a nice block. And this is what Mike Hart doesn't do. That's exactly what he doesn't do. And why you, it, it, when he's out of the lineup, it, it, it is really a, a detriment to that offense. That was Casey Matthews who stripped the ball away, number 55. <laughs> that guy tells the story right there. Got his hands on his head going, why did we just do that? <laughs> so now it's Dixon giving it off on the ground. And Jonathan Stewart gets out to about the 30-yard line. Michigan defensively actually they have to play Sean Crable a lot today as a stand-up defensive end because they're in a nickel most of the time so the two outside linebackers we put with the front six basically and then in the nickel situation in the defensive secondary you add Brandon Harrison who's made a couple good plays today back there is the nickel Dixon comes up firing again and bobbled but caught by Derek Jones another 12 yard pickup now, Dennis Dixon, he just loves to be able to play in this offense. The spread is awesome. I mean, you, got, you have so many threats as to what you want to do with the ball. Heck, I, I hate to be offensive coordinator because you never know what you want to do at, at any given time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny line. Boy, he's doing it all again today. So far, it's been with his arm more than his legs, which is what killed Houston last week. He had an 80-yard touchdown run last week. And whistles blow this one dead. Left guard moved. I think it was Chergy who came out of his stance. It was. The next, the next thing about this offense, too, Grease, that just absolutely kills you when you don't see that much of it, is that, Juan, like first down, Stewart takes the ball and he gains six. Well, now you're in second and four with this quarterback who can run. I mean, last week, this guy carried the ball. He ran for 141 yards. He averaged 9.4 per carry. That's Dixon. First and long this time. First and 15, running for his life, shows his ability to run right there and diving. Boy, he wanted that first down bad, didn't he? <laughs> Dennis, you could get it on second down. You don't have to kill yourself over there. Picked up 13 yards. Washington-Boise State update. Matt's got one for us in New York. Matt. 
That's right, Brad. A Taco Bell update from Seattle where the nation's longest win streak is in some jeopardy. Already 7-0 Washington. Lewis Rankin takes the pitch. He's up throwing to Quinton Daniels all by himself. Broncos down 14-0. Washington looks like a different team so far early, don't they? And Oregon looks like a pretty good team from the Pac-10, too. Six more yards by Stewart before Jamison can bring him down, and they'll move the sticks again. The you know, thing about this offense, Grayson, we talked to him, we talked to the coaches, and Ron English was just telling us, you know, they spread you out. They spread you all over the field. They use sometimes five receivers, wide receivers. Now they've got two tight ends, they got two wide receivers, and a running back behind a quarterback. Stewart, a big hurdle job. And down he goes with the ball. Oh, he didn't go down. The helmet is out. The ball is still alive. Check in with Bonnie. Talking about Michigan's defense, you have to know these players are on thin ice with Ron English. He said last week he doesn't remember the last time there were so many missed tackles, and he was adamant with these guys this week. He said, you will play hard, you will execute, and if you don't, you're going to be sitting on the bench. So he wasn't too happy when uh, that deep ball went for a touchdown for Oregon last time out. Here's Dixon on the run, acting like he's going to throw, and you know he can't throw because he was over the line of scrimmage, but he picked up four yards on the ground, you know, talking about Ron. The way he walked into our meeting yesterday, I said, Ron, what came first, the first film session or the first practice session after you gave the kids Sunday off? He said, it was film first and then it was practice. I said, I just wanted to know which one I wouldn't have wanted to have been at. <laughs> well, you know, the thing about it is, though, Ness, I'll get to it right after this play with English. Hurry up. Third down and short, <laughs> and Dixon, I think, has got the first down. He does. The thing about it, English, is you, know, you got to understand something. Michigan, they're starting seven new guys on defense. So if you are going to take somebody out, who are you going to put in? You don't have anybody behind these guys. This so he a, really has a dilemma. Paul, this is a defense that led the nation in rushing defense last year. We gave up 43 yards a game. Only 43 yards a game. And, and you know, the guys that were behind those guys that left aren't, aren't you know, they could play a little bit. But, but they're not Woodley and Branch and Hall and some of those guys. And Leon Hall and uh, Harris and you're right. <laughs> all those five or six guys. They're on the NFL. But the thing about the thing about this is this is a spread offense. But they led the conference, the Pac-10 conference in rushing. So they may show you rush rushing, I mean passing formation, but they're really good at running. They just don't have to block those guys that cover the guys that are on the outside. Eighth play of the duck drive. Jeremiah Johnson in the backfield. Dixon's got to go down on a bad snap and cover it. And that'll drop him way back to about the 40-yard line. We were talking to Coach Bellotti about where this came from, where this whole offensive idea came from. And basically, they installed this about three years ago. Before that, they were kind of a drop-back pocket type of passing team with the Joey Harringtons of the world and everything. But he said, you know, when I came to Oregon in 89, he said Hawaii was running a wishbone with uh, a throwing motion off it. He said it was kind of a mixture of things, a spread and the wishbone together. And that's what this is, basically a hybrid of that. And we're seeing more and more of it, Greece, around college football. You really are. And, you know, like I said, it's a spread, but but the option is there. The, the, the quarterback is a running back, and there's another back in the backfield with him. Chip there's Kelly, Chip his Kelly. first year as offensive coordinator, came from New Hampshire. Yep. Now, we're just seeing a couple of mistakes by Oregon, the Ducks. The bad snap on two snaps ago, and now the drop pass, wide open player. This is the first long yardage situation on third down for Oregon. 53% of their third downs converted last week. And this is third and 17. Here they come. Here they come. Dixon got away from the first man. And he's thinking about throwing. Now he'll get what he can and get out of bounds near the original line of scrimmage. That a drive. Ron English just straight up the wall. You got a blitz. You got a free blitzer. He's going on the quarterback, and the quarterback does a little juke. And, and, and away you go. It, it's Jamison, Grace number 90. Look at this. You call this perfectly. I mean, here's a guy. You've got to be under control when you get back there. And if you're not, you're going to let the quarterback do exactly what he just did, get to the outside. They're going to give Matt Evenson a chance for a long field goal. I mentioned he hit one from 45 and 44 last week. This will be a 49-yard field goal attempt. Brady leap the hole. Kick on the way. And it is wide left. Didn't get it. Close, but not quite. So no further damage done. The Michigan defense holds. They still trail by four. 
the big house. Capacity, 107,501. How did they all find parking? This is Big Ten country, and this is where it lives. To make sure you get the Big Ten Network, go to BigTenNetwork.com or call 866-WANT-B-1-0. It's not just a jersey. It's a symbol of who we are. A community of coaches, student athletes, and fans. Bound together by a code of conduct. To the inspirers of minds and the minds they inspire. To those who bring hope to the world today and give hope to tomorrow. To the ones who take what they learn and give something back. To those who tell great stories and those whose stories have yet to be told. Hail, for there truly is a Michigan difference. Back in Ann Arbor, the Wolverines huddled. Their defense held as Evenson missed a 49 yard field goal, so no further damage done. But two turnovers by Michigan, a fumble by Carlos Brown, interception by Chad Henney have stopped Michigan drives. Mike Hart carries, and as I mentioned, Mike Hart almost never fumbles. He's only fumbled three times, and they've all been either recovered or one went out of the end zone. So he came into the game, I think it was 751 touches without having given up the football. So he's a pretty solid guy. And the first quarter was a pretty solid one for both teams. And Oregon on the road, doing what Appalachian State did a week ago. But we got a long way to go. 11-7 at the end of one. Ducks in front. This is the place. Let's go. Open 24 hours. Common sense never sleeps. Two for one hot dogs with all the fixings. Now that's how you help people live the high life. Hey, how you doing, bud? There you go. This place is a mountain of goodness in a mixed up world. Thank you very much. Now come over here, I got something to show you. We got a surprise for you. Switch it on, boys. <laughs> Certified purveyors of the high life. That's you, buddy. Certified purveyors of the middle high life. Yeah. <laughs> Proof the world hasn't gone completely crazy. Dell Inspiron 1520, powered by Intel Centrino Duo Processor Technology. Dell, yours is here. This is the place where the whole science, the whole technology of the auto industry comes together with the arts. The result is a vehicle that is not only technically exciting, but also has uh, just a very great sense of proportion and balance. It's that blend, you know, say art and science, that's Cadillac. Tuesday, October 2nd on ABC. Start here. A Toyota. Get in. Toyota. Get in. The Toyota Tundra is changing a lot of minds. And now you can get $2,500 cash back. Find out more at whytundra.com. This K2 program brought to you by Les Schwab Tires. 
Start the second quarter with Chad Haney coming up to throw and hit from behind. Let's say, are they going to say it's a foot? No, that's, that's an incomplete pass. Haney took a pretty good shot. We start the second quarter. Welcome, everybody. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein. Guys, we're on pace right now for uh, 1,400 yards of total <laughs> offense. I love it. I'm an <laughs> offensive guy. I get behind the offenses and ever. But Michigan can't win that way. They're, they got to gotta control the ball some and help their defense. We talked about it. Both defenses, they really have to do something because they didn't show up last week, and the defenses really have not showed up so far this week. So third down and long. Third and seven. Oregon showing blitz, and they're bringing it. Henny stands tall and fires, and got Manningham for a first down. Out of bounds. you got to give Chad Henny credit. He saw the steam coming. And he hung in there, and he delivered a strike of 14 yards. Good point, Brad. And, he, and his guys up front picked it up. And he found the guy that was open, and there was nobody covering. Erring, er, who was it, Arrington that caught it? Or uh, Manningham. 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 Come in motion and then goes across the formation, and nobody goes with him. And he got it out to the 49-yard line. Michigan with the familiar-looking three-wide receiver offense. We wouldn't have said that about 15 years ago, would we? This is Arrington, and he's got another first down, and he's all the way down to the 33 yard line one of the things that's happened here and they told us uh, Oregon that they were going to do this both corners Thurman and Bird are going to stay on their side they're not going to flip flop with the receivers so that these guys are basically playing man to man on the outside they have that much confidence in both those corners but so far they have not done the job well Bird was the co Pac-10 freshman of the year and a freshman All-American and Thurman was a second team yeah. freshman All-American so they learned under fire last year and they're a lot better for it this time around in their second season here comes an end around and it's Mario Manningham with a crease but he's got a crease he usually takes it to the barn but he had one guy he couldn't beat and that was Harper nice run though end around for 14 yards the strength of this defense are the defensive backs as you guys mentioned the two corners and Patrick Chung this direction you get uh, the defense going one way and then you come back Michigan has had the ball four times they've scored once and they've turned it over two times you know that guy's made two game yes. breaking saving saving yes one an interception and they're a touchdown saving tackle boy the uh, linebacker not much that time for Mike Hart John Bacon, the middle linebacker, in on the stop. A couple of big games coming up tonight on ESPN. Notre Dame freshman quarterback Jimmy Clausen is going to start, apparently, against Joe Paz Nittany Lions. Notre Dame and Penn State available online at ESPN360.com as well. And at 9.15, Virginia Tech going down to play LSU. Tigers got a brand-new mascot. They're going to be all pumped up down there at night. Got a new mascot. They got a new huh? mascot. They got a new tiger. Is he going to play? Well, they say he's going to grow to be 700 pounds. I don't know if they'll put him in. If less, will put him in a defensive I, line. Later I don't think not. he needs to play. Probably not. Dorsey's big enough. Yeah, down there. they got it. That's right. Second down and nine. Henny fire into the corner. Incomplete. Greg Matthews up in the air, almost able to bring it down. And it'll bring up third down. Henny is finding some time to throw the ball now. And if you give him that much time to throw the ball, he's going to put it in the end zone. He just has to be careful with it where he puts it because these guys are good in that secondary. They can run against the front seven, but the back four the, are, are trouble for a quarterback. The Ducks just changed up six guys on defense before this play. And they're all littler guys back there expecting, I would say, a pass here from Chad Henny. There's the three down guys. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's to, a whistle. Michigan took a timeout. Yeah, they went to a 3-4 three, a three, nickel. Chad Henney's going to take the timeout right along with us. Now it's time for the All-State Good Hands flashback, the Hail Mary. Three wide outs at the top of the picture. Stewart with time. Let's it go. He's got three people down there. The ball's up in the air. Caught. Touchdown. Caught by Westbrook for a touchdown. Incredible.
Why do you always get the front seat? Because I have a higher education. What do you I mean? took honors classes. <laughs> In I high school. I, hey, it's Bobby Bowden. I'm going to touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. I'm still going to touch him. Part of Allstate, your choice auto insurance. Are you in good hands? That wasn't him. But you still touched him. <laughs> Nissan Titan is a strategic vision total quality award leader. It's also the only truck tough enough to deliver college football's most coveted award. The Heisman, brought to you by the Nissan Titan. This fall, Tuesday is carpool day. Remember, a good driver is always relaxed and hyper aware. So kind of like a peaceful panic. <laughs> panic response needs work. Carpoolers, a new comedy. Premieres Tuesday, October 2nd on ABC. Start here. ESPN College Football on ABC. 13-16 remaining in the half. Michigan trailing Oregon. <laughs> some crazy signs, some crazy t-shirts this week as well. Third down at 10, Michigan. Here comes a blitz. Henny stands in and he goes down. Took a big hit, dropped back at the 26-yard line. Yep. Matthew Harper again. Harper is everywhere. He really is. <laughs> he really is. I mean, but you, they send more people than you have to block. And Henny is limping. You're going to see Harper come right up. Watch this. They don't have enough people to block. And here comes Harper from the outside. Nobody to block him. Mike. Hart made a block. Long made a block. But yeah. there was nobody there. Nick Aliotto, the um, defensive coordinator, went to a three-man line and had an overload, a zone blitz from the from the left side. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 34, Oregon. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, 20, Michigan. Those offset, fourth down. The two captains, Mike Hart and A.J. Tuatelli, having a little at it at the end of that play. There's Nick, longtime assistant. Left at one time and uh, ended up uh, UCLA and then in the NFL for a while, but his heart always in Eugene and back there running the show defensively for Coach Bellotti. I don't think he needs a, that headset. He can yell down. Yeah, he can. <laughs> Jason Gingell, who had a couple block last week, is going to try one here for Michigan on the way and hit the uprights. No good. So Michigan can get no closer. Oregon's defense holds. That's the way they feel in Ann Arbor today. HD? HD. Thoughts? Lots of thoughts. LCD, plasma. Kiva surround sound, head spinning. Deep breath. Likes? Cowboy explosions, touchdown robots. Cooking, tearjerkers, crime dramas. Sing-along musicals. This system. Hi. Nice. Mechanically inclined? Emergency room inclined. We install. High five. We pledge a complete home theater experience. And now get no interest financing for three years on home theaters $9.99 and up. That's HD done right. At Best Buy. You hear about Bensky? No. Got hurt, missed work. Thought his major medical was enough. Poor guy. Didn't have Aflac. What does Aflac do? Let's say this is major medical right. Well, see the hole? That's where Aflac comes in. Helps pay for groceries. Oh, rent. <laughs> All kinds of bills. Major medical? <laughs> Poor Fenske. He thought he had enough coverage. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> this is too easy, man. <laughs> How did you pull it back together after what happened to you? You become someone else. A stranger. It's all you are now. There's no going back. Believe the fear belonged to other people. Weaker people. What do you want? You wish. The Brave One. Rated R. Starts September 14th. Only the Nissan Titan has a Utilitrack cargo system and the longest crew cab bed in its class. You choose the tie down points, you choose the angle. Because Nissan thinks when you put something in your bed, 
it should stay there. The new 2008 full-size Nissan Titan. The Titan of trucks. Now get up to $3,500 Nissan cash back or 1.9% APR financing. This presentation of ESPN's College Football on ABC brought to you by the Nissan Titan, proud presenter of the 2007 Heisman. DLP HD TV. DLP is the official ESPN on ABC HD telecast sponsor of college football. And Aflac. Ask about it at work. Singerman's open in 82 in a historic building near Ann Arbor's Farmer's Market. Offers a great selection of food of which we partook yesterday. I'm getting kind of hungry right now, fellas. Yeah, I ordered lunch and got dinner. <laughs> Here's Johnson. Jeremiah Johnson's got a first down and a lot more. Both Jeremiah Johnson and Jonathan Stewart. Great one-two punch. 17-yard pickup by Johnson that time. Well, this is what uh, Johnson can do. He's an old shake and bake runner. He gets he gets right here. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. And Trent just uh, look, goes looking for his uh, <laughs> piece of his uh, clothing on the floor. Mike Bellotti says Johnson's a thief in the night when he runs. And that showed on that last play. Incomplete intended for Jason Williams. Broken up by Morgan Trent. Time for our Aflac trivia Aflac. question. He's got a bounds at about the 12. The duck goes out. Ten Oregon quarterbacks have thrown for more than 2,000 yards in a single season. But who's the guy that did it first? Think about it. That's not too there's been hard. Some good quarterbacks at all. Yeah, there've been some bunch of good quarterbacks. Second down and ten for the Ducks at the 43. Here's Johnson up the middle, got to the 50, and he's going to be about three yards shy of the first down. Got it to midfield. As so we take a look at our ESPNU All-State standings review, USC is going to maintain the number one spot because they don't play this week. Big LSU, game next week, yeah. Yeah, big game next week. LSU, we mentioned already, playing Virginia Tech. That's a big one. Down in the bayou tonight. And Louisville, one of the teams that's already 2-0, put 58 more points up the other night. Oklahoma won today. Yep. West Virginia won, didn't it? They were winning big the last time I saw them. Third down. And Johnson's got the first at the 45. Shifty runner, Jeremiah Johnson. He can run a lot faster than... Uh, and Robert Redford when he was Jeremiah Johnson. <laughs> I can say the one thing about these running backs are that they, they pound you. Stewart just labels you. He weighs 230. And then Jeremiah is 205. He's a shifty guy. Dixon comes up throwing. It's complete. Now that was a hurry up. Normally this is a spread offense, spread option offense with no huddle. They're in no hurry. But that time they got up to the line of scrimmage and ran a play very quickly before Michigan defensively was ready. Let's see if they're going to do it again. Try to quicken the pace. Yep. Dixon going to oh run boy. with it. He's got a wide open field on the backside inside the 30. Tip goes out at the 26 yard line. Just that easy. Picked up 12 yards. Ness, we're seeing so many guys, especially uh, the quarterback and the two running backs for Oregon and Hart again for Michigan with great vision. These guys, I mean, as soon as that hole Whoa. opens, they're gone. They don't even hesitate. When you see Dixon and he's got that much room, get out of the way. Well, first down for the Ducks. They, they picked up the tempo by speeding up the no huddle right along here in his last three or four plays. Pump bank Statue of Liberty to Stewart to the outside. Stewart with a hurdle inside the 20, and he bulldozes his way down near the 10-yard line. What a run <laughs> by Jonathan Stewart. And Paul said he's 230 pounds. He'll run over you. When he was in high school, they said he was one of the greatest running backs in Oregon history. The guy they said was the best one ever is over on their sideline. I know you fellas saw him before the game. There he is. Then Bobby Moore. Now, as we know him, of course, Ahmad Rashad. Isn't that a great run? That was a great run. That was a great run. First down at the 11. They'll try it again. This time, Michigan tried to stand him up. And they do. He got maybe two, though. Brandon Logan, the linebacker, made the stop. Grace, you see any confusion on the Michigan defense? I, 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 you know what? I'm just, I, it seems like more and more teams are using this spread option offense. 
You, you spread them out. You use three or four wide receivers. You leave one back in the backfield along with the quarterback. And the key is the quarterback can run. The better he can run, the more dangerous this is. And Dixon can throw, too, which is look, what he's looking to do right here. And now he shows with a stiff arm on the sideline. Gets out of bounds at about the nine-yard line. He's a good-looking quarterback. And we talked about the athletic group earlier about quarterbacks. Quack, quack. Who's the first one to throw for 2,000 yards in a season? It's our buddy, our teammate, Foutsy. Dan Fouts. And that's the Oregon uniforms are a little different than they <laughs> uh, That looks like a Packer that's uniform. That's that, that, yeah. No, that's... Yeah, Fouts, was the first one to do it. And nine other guys have done so since. The uniforms the, the Ducks are wearing now are a little bit different than Look, what he wore. A little bit different. Dixon, one of the guys that's thrown for over 2,000 yards in a season. Now he's trying to do it with his legs. And he goes out of bounds at about the three-yard line. So it's going to be fourth down at the three. See, I like what he does, though. You know, he, he knows that he can run with the ball. He can throw the ball. He's got everything going for him, and there's no sense of getting killed on one play. He is tired right now, though. I can tell you, having run around the last three or four or five plays. Got his hands on his hips right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's got a fourth down he's Dennis, looking at. My man Dennis Dixon is tired. I said, let me hand this ball off to somebody. Let me or take a timeout. Hey, this is a huge play. It's fourth it down and two, and they're going for it. Dixon says somebody else take it, like this guy. Touchdown, Ducks. Jonathan Stewart for the touchdown. Talk about gambling on the road. They went for a two-point conversion after their first touchdown. Yep. Now they bulldoze it in on a fourth and two at the three-yard line. Mike there was a hole. Mike Bellotti on the sidelines, call calling the plays, punching the buttons, deciding to go for it on fourth, go for a two-point conversion, making all the right calls. Now they're going to kick the extra points. Daniel Padilla to attempt the extra Daniel point. Padilla in for the point after. Giving the freshman some time, and he puts it right down the middle. So Jonathan Stewart, we talked about him on that drive. He looked pretty good on the final play of the drive. Two-yard touchdown, and the Ducks go in front by 11. Titan is a strategic vision total quality award leader. It's also the only truck tough enough to deliver college football's most coveted award. The Heisman, brought to you by the Nissan Titan. On September 14th. Well, it looks like I'm going to be your new dad. Ow! I can't take this anymore! Fear the whistle. Into the pool. Feel the love. You're going down, Woodcock. And take a lap with Mr. Woodcock. Take a lap. Take a lap. You're not the first person in the world to get a hip replacement. Take a lap. Mr. Woodcock. Rated PG-13. Only in theaters September 14. Retirement isn't just about spending endless hours enjoying warm, tropical waters. It's not even just about leaping and jumping for joy because you planned ahead smartly. And it's not even about sharing time with family and friends over a great meal whenever you want. Or is it? It's time to start thinking about tomorrow. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Step up to a beer brewed longer. Step up to exceptional taste that's never filling. Ninety-nine calories, zero grams of fat. Budweiser Select. Step ABC Premier Week begins Monday, September twenty-fourth on ABC. ESPN College Football on ABC. Where the Oregon Ducks lead the Michigan Wolverines, surprisingly, maybe to some, 18-7. to 7. 
74 yards and 11 plays in just over two minutes. Matt Evenson to kick Carlos Brown and Junior Hemingway again back deep for the Wolverines. Kind of a stunned sellout crowd again. I don't make it any noise. This should be returnable for Carlos Brown at the goal line. And Brown did not get to the 20. Got to about the 19 yard line. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary so far in this one. Chad Haney going deep, intercepted by Matt Stewart. Took it back to 25 yards to set up a field goal, but then Chad came back with a strike to Arrington. And then the long ball, 85-yard touchdown pass, Brian Pacinger from Dennis Dixon. They got the two-point conversion, and they just took it down, and Jonathan Stewart scored from two yards out, and that's our 18-7. Oregon in front. Haney, the quick drop, and the out to Manningham. Uh, beg your pardon, Arrington. Arrington pushed out of bounds after he picked up about seven. This is the side that's got to pick it up for the Wolverines, is that's the offense. They've had the ball four times. They've scored one touchdown and missed a 42-yard field goal. The other two times, they turned the ball over. The interception I mentioned in Carlos Brown's fumble when he was in just to give Mike Hart a breather on his only carry. The offense has got to stay out on the field and get some points. Here's Mike Hart. He is smothered after about a yard gain. Nice job defensively by Oregon. It's going to be third down Michigan. Reminder, just one race to decide the championship. It's a three-way battle to the finish. Looking for the Peak Antifreeze IndyCar 300 presented by Mr. Clean at Chicago tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Big third down right here for Michigan because we're under 10 minutes in the second quarter. They're trailing at home again for the second week in a row by 11 points to the Ducks of Oregon. Backfield was empty. Chad Henney rolling to throw. High delivery and it was... So high that by the time Manningham could pull it down, he was out of bounds. There's a flag on the field. Deep in the secondary. You would think that's going to be a holding on the defense where that one's thrown, but we'll wait and see. That's uh, the call. That's, that's like a turnover because Michigan would have had to give the ball up, and now they get it back with the Oregon exactly. penalty. You know, when you're talking about the Michigan's four possessions. Holding defense, number 15, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. The four possessions in this, they were in Oregon's territory all four times and only have seven points yep. to show for it. Look to the top left. I think it's Arrington. Right here. Yeah, he gets smothered out there trying to get out of his pattern and run over by Patrick Chung. So Michigan's got, as Bob said, new life. The 38-yard line. Hard up the middle. Mike's still going on his feet down to the 44-yard line. He doesn't go down when you think he's going down. 18-yard <laughs> pickup. What a difference this guy makes when he's in the ball game. Nice blocking up front by Jake Long, 77. Mitchell, 73. And then Hart does a little bit on his own. You know, he came in only... 133 yards shy of 4,000 for his career here. And he's got 80 yards right now on 14 carries. Here comes Mike again. Left side, got a blocker in front. Boy, we've seen some good runs today. Mike Bellotti knew coming in, the head coach at Oregon, that this guy was going to be tough. Well, you're also seeing an awful lot of good blocks at the line. He's got great balance. He breaks tackles. He doesn't go down easily. He has deceptive speed. Um, you've got to stop him before he gets started. You've got to constrict that area early. That's a problem. Yeah. They haven't constricted the area early <laughs> enough. <Yeah. laughs> First down, Michigan. Now let's see what they can do with it. Again, in Oregon territory. Deep out, caught by Arrington. Out of bounds. About a six-yard 
pick up Bonnie. Talking to uh, Kwame Ajiman, one of Oregon's linebackers during the week, they were obsessed with their preparation of Harden. They, and they sort of have this two-pronged approach. One, you see how easily he shed tackles. You can't just throw one guy at his ankles and expect him to go down. So they wanted to swarm him, surround him with white jerseys every time he had the rock. The other thing, as you guys alluded to, they really want to penetrate the backfield early and force him to redirect because if you watch hard enough, you know if you let him run a straight read without slowing him down, he'll bust a big one on you. And he's busted a couple of big ones already today. Both backs, all three backs have played very well. Two for Oregon and Mike Hart for Michigan. And it's Mike again. And this time they do swarm around him. He only got about a two-yard pickup. You know, Nick Aliotti is a very vocal defensive coordinator. Just listen to him before the game down on the field here in Ann Arbor. Let's go D-line. D-line's big today now. Atta baby. That'll win this thing up front. We gotta stop the run. We gotta win this thing up front now. Jeremy, keep that we energy. Eat today, coach. Keep that energy. We eat today. <laughs> you look good moving. Guys, you look good moving. Come on, let's go. That's Nick pretty much every day. <laughs> we're eating today, there he coach. Is. Hey, that lineman that said we're eating today weighs 290 pounds. <laughs> Third down and a long three for Michigan. <laughs> Kenny, here comes a blitz. And down he goes again. Second time the blitz has gotten to him. It was a defensive end, Jeremy Gibbs, that got him, but it was the pressure of Nick Aliotti's defense that, that got to him. That was Gibbs that was just saying, we're eating today. Yeah, he just ate up the quarterback of the Wolverine. Number 99, Jeremy Gibbs, 6'3", 290 pounds, and he gets, to, he gets to the quarterback. Look at this. He gets through the block and then down at the quarterback's knees. Henny has no chance. You know what, the Michigan offense, Jake Long especially, was held his palms up as if to say, why don't we go for this thing, or are we going to kick? And there was a long time to make the decision. And now they're going to try to kick. And it's going to be Jason Gingell, who missed one earlier and had a couple blocked last week. And this is a long field goal attempt. They officially call it 50. And now the officials stop play. Delay. Delay a game. I don't know if they're going to kick a field goal from 55, are they? And this is what killed them last week against Appalachian State. Penalties, missed field goals, missed opportunities, and turnovers. Five times in Oregon territory in this first half. Five times, and they scored once. Seven points. And now they've got a punt. So they went from an opportunity for a long field goal to having Zoltan Mesco have to come in and punt it away. I don't think Oregon's buying that this is going to be a punt. Now they're in their regular defense. Just a safe defense. And he will kick. He's got a tremendous leg, but he hit this one way too far. All the way out the back of the end zone. So now Oregon's going to have the ball back, and we'll see if Ron English, Michigan Wolverine defense, can slow him down. So far, they haven't. It's a big world. And it's my job to shrink it. I'm a model maker. We shrink buildings. We shrink landscapes. I make it really small. So when my doctor said that my going and going was because of an enlarging prostate, I said, how can we bring it down to size? He said, Avidart. He said, Avidart's different because over time, it actually shrinks the prostate and improves urinary symptoms over the long term. Other medicines don't treat the cause because they don't shrink the prostate. Avidart is for men only. Women should not take or handle Avidart due to risk of a specific birth defect. Tell your doctor if you have liver disease. Rarely sexual side effects, swelling, or tenderness of the breasts can occur. Only your doctor can determine if your symptoms are from an enlarged prostate and not prostate cancer. So have regular prostate exams. Ask your doctor about Avidart today. It's your growing problem. It's our job to shrink it. Avidart. You'll love this. Watch. The mirrors make bigger, better. Well, it's fast, sharp, it's big. But they got rules. It's amazing. It's the mirrors. DLP HD TV. Millions of tiny mirrors make the biggest pictures better. Get 36 months no interest financing on DLP HD TVs today at Circuit City. 
I'm Matt Weiner with the Sports Center Minute powered by Vizio. A rare interstate meeting between Ohio State and Akron this afternoon goes to the Buckeyes after a slow start. Todd Beckman to Brian Robisky, 22 there. And the nation's longest win streak is in jeopardy. Jake Locker to Marcel Reese, 58 yards. Washington leads Boise State 24-7. The Broncos have a 14-game win streak on the line. I like that Jake Locker kid, Matt. Thanks for the updates. I was, I was impressed with that kid. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC presented by Best Buy. We're at the big house. 18-7 Oregon. And here comes Stewart again. Rumbling into the secondary. Picked up about eight more yards. So let's see. We've got uh, about 265 yards of uh, offense for Oregon. And we still have seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Scored in three of the first four possessions. The time of possession is uh, in their favor. Here's Stewart. Cuts to the outside. Hurdles his way out to the 50. Boys, he had a couple of great runs today, or what? 23 more yards for the big fella. Well, he, he saw Warren out there, and I just think he made a left to just run over him. I, you know, he didn't have a chance to really run over anybody yet. So here he comes when he, when he breaks it out. Just take a look at him. It looked like once he's through now that he could cut it back to the inside. Two Michigan guys knocked each other off. But he goes out and knees Warren in the head. And a first down now for the Ducks back in Michigan territory. Just shaded on their side of the 50. Dixon on play action. High pass, but caught. Nice catch. Pickup of about five by Brian Pacinger. Had to go up and get that one. Brandon Harrison is the guy that made the stop. Coming up, Cooper Tire halftime show. John Craig and Doug in New York will have all the scores and highlights and possible upsets in the making if you consider Washington over Boise State an upset. Throwing the other way this time, and this is going to be a first down to Jason Williams. Jason Williams mixing it up over there with Donovan Warren, who pushed him out of bounds, but still, he's got the first down. And this guy's huge for a wide receiver, Jason Williams. 6'5", 240. 240, a wide receiver, but <laughs> I'm on. impressed with this guy right here. Dennis Dixon, just, just managing the game, running the offense, spread option, throwing the ball well. It's his show right now. Jeremiah Johnson, this is one of the few plays Oregon has lost yardage. Well, what Michigan needs is a turnover. They need to, 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 to jump up. Last year, Oregon was one of the worst teams in the nation in turnover margin. They were 109th in turnover margin. They had minus 10 turnovers. This year, in two games, a game and a half, Oregon is plus six. Right. And it cost them 97 points last year with all those turnovers. Johnson again hammered immediately at the line of scrimmage. Obeize and Donovan Warren in on the stop. And so now it's a third and long situation, which the Ducks have not found themselves in very often today. I don't know whether Michigan really wants them in third. <laughs> I don't know where they want them in anywhere. I mean, they, they're tired. The defense is tired. They're trying to get people on and off the field on the defense. Well, the Chevy rock and roll NASCAR race is coming up tonight. Right now it's Oregon that's been rocking and rolling. Here in Ann Arbor all day long. Nobody covering the slot guy. And that can't be good. Oh. That tells you right away it's his own coverage. Right there in the corner bottom of your screen. Dixon flushed from the pocket, broke a tackle. He's going to get a first down. Oh, man. He is unbelievable. 14 yards on a third and 11. Yeah, the problem is you got to worry about Jonathan Stewart running the ball, and you got to worry about Jeremiah Johnson running the ball. So now when Dixon gets back to throw the ball, you got to worry about him running the ball. Yeah. So they have three great runners in their backfield. And that's the whole concept, basically. You, you have the have, running quarterback you in have, this offense. You got to have somebody backing up the line that can catch him. Look at this formation. They got Jeremiah Johnson stacked <laughs> down on the right hand side in the slot. Look at those. You don't see many of that uh, in any football. Maybe. Canadian Football League, I don't know. Let's see where they go with it. Dixon's going to fire it. Oh, catch. And a first down. Jason Williams, well, that's what helps about being 6'5", 240. You can muscle your way up and make grabs. So Oregon is moving down the field, and they might score again. They lead 18-7, to trying to shock Michigan here on their home field for the second straight week after what happened a week ago to Appalachian State. And I'm telling you, this is a stunned 112,000 people right now. Penalties all over the place. Oregon has 323 yards of offense. 
Contact six and they've done it in a lot of different ways, including going airborne for 85 yards on a perfect pass down the sideline. Pacinger from Dixon. That's the biggest play of the day. How can but there have been a lot of other good ones. How can a guy, Dixon, throw so well and still be able to move so, so well and so quickly? That's why the Braves drafted him in the fifth round to play baseball. Yeah. First and five as the Michigan penalty gives oh. Oregon even better Look at, field position. Looking to the sideline, he got a check off. They saw the cover, the defense was checking it off from the sideline. At the nine yard line, pump fake, Statue of Liberty, Stewart, and now it's Dixon. Didn't he get, had me. He didn't give it to him. He didn't give it to him. <laughs> he faked you. He got you, Ness. <laughs> he got me. Touchdown, Oregon. Was this a beautiful play or what? And they were waiting on the outside for Stewart to get the ball. Watch this. The right-hand side of the defense are waiting for what Stewart. Waiting for Stewart. Now, he doesn't give it to him. He's going to keep it and come this way. Earlier, they ran the Statue of Liberty where he did give it to him. Just a great call. And a touchdown. <laughs> I love it. Capping another 80-yard drive. Extra point is up and good. It is 25 to 7, Oregon. Oh, the Michigan faithful are beside themselves. Here's another look. What a beautiful play. Boise State would love it, wouldn't they? Ooh, the never-ending pasta bowl is going on. Oh, you didn't know? No, I, I, I figured that's why you were in such a hurry to get here. No, no, I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Olive Garden's never-ending pasta bowl is back with delicious new sauces like sausage and peppers marinara and smoked mozzarella alfredo. Pick any combination of sauce and pasta, then another. Try them all for just $8.95 plus endless breadsticks and salad. I'll have the penny with meat sauce followed by the five cheese marinara. No idea, huh? <laughs> Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. There's not a million of them here, but boy, are they having fun right now. The folks who came from Eugene or from around here that happen to be Oregon fans, and you can see the jubilation, and then all of a sudden, boom, it just drops off. The, yeah, we'll wave at you, but we have nothing to cheer about so far. 25 to 7, the Ducks lead Michigan. Evenson to kick. Johnny Sears and Brandon Miner back deep this time for Michigan. And this one will be returnable. It'll be, I think, Massey, the up man. See the tight end goes out to about the 26 yard line. Well, they're rich, they're ruthless, they're related. Wednesdays this fall, America's wealthiest family will be on the loose, and only one man can keep them out of the headlines. Donald Sutherland, Jill Clayberg, William Baldwin, and Peter Krause star in Dirty Sexy Money. The series premieres Wednesday, September 26th at 10, 9 Central, only on ABC. That's a new one, huh? That's a new one. We got to try that one. Paul got a part in that one? Does yeah, he? I'm the money. You're the money? Yeah. Grease would be the sexy, and I'd have to be the dirty, I suppose, huh? That's you, Dirt. Well, he's got that. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's got those boyish good looks, you know. Yeah. First down for Chad Haney. Trying to throw a slant, ricochet off Arrington, and incomplete. Walter Thurman, one of those sophomore corners, made the hit. You know, that fake Statue of Liberty, that was another one of those plays when I said before about the two-point play when they in the stands and people went, what was that? Yeah, what was that? But they just did that again. <laughs> and Mike, would you want to tell me what that was? What was that? I tell you what, Jared Zabransky, the quarterback from Boise State last year, would have loved that play if he's watching someplace. Let me tell you something. Um, the Dolphins, in one of their preseason games, Cam Cameron ran that play no from the five-yard line, and it worked. That worked beautifully for oh. Dixon. Nine-yard gallop with nobody even knowing he had the ball until he was in the end zone, including yours truly. Penny. Incomplete. Threw that one away. Is there a flag down? There is a flag. That's one of the things. That, you know, that you said... No, we, there's we, not a flag. I beg your pardon. We said Oregon had to take heart out of the game. They have done that. They're taking heart out of the game because they're up 25-7. to 7. Michigan's now got to get back in this ball game by throwing the ball. This is exactly what Oregon wanted them to do. That to was, put them in that position. That was the game plan you talked about earlier. Well, there's too much time 
in this game left for them to, to go away from Hart. They got to continue to run him. They're going to have to pass here, you would assume. Oh, yeah. Third down at 10. Under three and a half minutes in the second quarter. Henny pressured again. He's going to loft one long. Manningham's trying to find it, and he can't. It was over one shoulder, and the ball was over the other. He tried to shag it down out there. He had his man beat. So Michigan's going to have to kick it. Now the problem is you're giving Oregon the ball back with over three minutes. That's not good. <laughs> because the last time they had it with 325 to go, which we have 323 to go, they went 80 yards in nine plays. First three and out for Michigan today. So Mesco, who's got a great leg set to kick, he can air this one as long as he wants. He doesn't have to kick his coverage. Spiral oh, way back to the 22, but now coming straight ahead is Brown, and he's got a nice return back to the 39, almost the 40 yard line. 52 yard kick, but again, he got 17 coming back. Got a question for you Who am I? I'm best known for my success as a coach, but I hold the Oregon career mark for highest average yards per carry. Who might I be? This one will trick you a little bit. Uh, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. That's a tough uh, one. Somebody, somebody, somebody had to really dig for that one. John McKay, the coach, running back for Iowa, back uh, Iowa, Oregon, back in the uh, late 40s, and a successful coach, of course, especially at USC before going out of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Dixon, deep ball, man wide open, got him perfect. This is an Oregon touchdown. Derek <laughs> Jones. It took one play. For Dennis Dixon to throw another perfect pass. 61 yards, touchdown Ducks. <laughs> uh, there's another one of those. And what was that? I'll tell you, this guy is so good. This Dennis Dixon, when he said he loves this offense, I guess so. They got, uh, what, 800 yards so far? <laughs> I'll tell you what, they may be close to 500. <laughs> Wow, wow, 393 officially. And we're not at halftime yet. Dixon, an 85-yard touchdown earlier to Pacinger, and now 61-yard rocket to Derrick Jones, and Padilla's extra point has added to the Oregon total. It is 32 to 7. All I can say is wow right now. Well, let's take a look and see what happened. Here's the uh, slot guy. He's going to go straight down the field. They do a little play action fake in here. And it's a three deep zone. Right here, you can stop it. And you see, here's a defender, there's a defender. And it right down, split the seam is the Oregon receiver. And he just put the ball right on the money. <laughs> he almost caught the back end of this ball. That's how good it looks as we get another angle. Dixon is going to be thrown, and Jones is going to be coming right at you. Watch this catch over the shoulder. Boop, back of the ball. This Goodbye. Is, this is the second week in a row that Michigan is defensively is facing this style of offense, the spread option offense. Look at the numbers here for Dixon. Dixon, 293 of their 393 total. <laughs> wow. You got to have a quarterback that can do it. That was the style of offense that Appalachian State used. And, 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 and we were talking to some of the coaches, and I said, uh, obviously, to get ready for these two first games, you knew you were going to play a spread option offense. You probably practice this in the spring and all summer, and they shook their head yes. And I said, you're probably going to be glad when Notre Dame comes yeah. in here next week and doesn't have this style of offense. Johnny Sears from the six-yard line on the kick return. Sears. Had a little bit of an opening. It closed on him. Still a pretty good looking return. Grace this Curtis. There's a passing chart of what Dennis Dixon has done today. Mm. Pretty impressive, huh? <laughs> he got 162 yards either down the middle or down the left side. And two of them touchdowns. Grace, you know, when you brought that up, what about teams like Notre Dame? And them? Do they change offenses now? Can they change offenses to play Michigan? No, they can't change and do what, what these first two opponents have done. I mean, they can use a spread, but they don't have the quarterbacks that can do what 
Armani Edwards last week did for App State or what Dixon is doing here this afternoon. Mike Hart got about eight as the clock winding down to 40 remaining. And we were in the talking. Half. We were talking to uh, Coach Pilati the other day and we we're saying it's actually easier to find some of these quarterbacks because because a lot of the high schools are using it now. Well, now the fans are turning on Chad Henney. And that doesn't Ooh. happen very often in this building. Big house is getting nasty. Yeah. Hart is over 100 yards, by the way, with 103. And Michigan in his career is 17 and 3 when he rushes for 100 yards. Unfortunately, he went 188 last week and he's got 103 today, and neither one's going very well exactly. right now. Yeah. They don't even know where to line up. And Mike, another carry. Nice move. Oh. Cross midfield. <laughs> he's shifty, isn't he? He's shifty and he's strong. Yes. He's fun to watch because he's, again, he sees it all. There's an Oregon player down, but he really does. He sees it all. He's not one of these flashy guys, but what he does do is he's got enough power and he's got his feet are so quick that he can make that one little quick move and still pick up another five or six yards. And there he is getting a quick breather on the sideline. He's checking out his last run up on the Jumbotron down on the other end of the field. As you see, his 21st career 100 yard game. And now he's only uh, a few yards shy of hitting 4,000 for his career here at Michigan. Miner in to take his spot. Ooh, that was a wicked hit at the end of that play. Eight yard run by Miner, though. And so Michigan's back in Oregon territory. The only problem is when they get there, they've got to do something with it. And they desperately need a touchdown before halftime. Any kind of points would help, but they're looking. For a touchdown. Henny throws a perfect strike on the quick slant to Adrian Arrington. They've tried that play two or three times today. It's worked a couple of times. Yeah, they just they need they need a score here and they need a touchdown. Three quarterbacks on the sideline signaling the next play in. One is the the live guy and the other two are dummies. And we don't mean that that they're dummies, just for their parents that are watching at home. <laughs> Mike Hart, oh man, did he get hit that time? Fatete. Put a Tay Tay on him that time. The big guy <laughs> out of Medford, Oregon, 310 pounder. Uh, Tay Tay is out here on the left side. Ooh. Ooh, nobody. He weighs 310, but Ooh. 10 of it's his hair. <laughs> and he in trouble again in the pocket. And the pass tip, tip, tip. Arrington trying to find a handle and couldn't. Boy, he tried to catch that about three times. And Walter Thurman finally knocked it away from him. Well, one of the problems you got, Henny's got people at his feet all the time. I mean, they're they're getting to him. They're getting close. What they're doing is they're forcing him to throw the ball when he doesn't want to throw it. And with that, he's only one of his last six attempts. And now he's got another one probably upcoming here. It's third down and nine. A minute 20 remaining in the half. If you're just joining us, you're maybe as stunned as some of the folks here in Ann Arbor today because Oregon's come from the Pac-10 a long ways away. Stayed on their West Coast time, and they're putting a, I don't know, Midwest licking right now on Michigan, 32 to 7. Kenny going to scramble. Now backs up. Still looking for a receiver all the way to the Michigan sideline, and then got unceremoniously knocked out of bounds right in front of his own bench by Willie Glasper. The difference in the two style of quarterbacks. Dixon would have had that ball taking it down to the 10 five yard line Hart goes to the sideline straight to the sideline and, and then mallets coming in I think well maybe not Chad walking back out there they were going to send in Ryan mallet I think but they had a head uh, chin strap problem or something so Chad Henney is going back out there you got fourth down here fourth down and a bunch fourth and 12 they need to go all the way to the 20 yard line and now timeout Michigan so part of that's due to the fact that Chad Henney is shaken up. They couldn't get the backup quarterback in, and then with the confusion, the time was winding down, and Michigan takes a timeout. Okay, heading to the Home Depot. Big event going on. Honey, promise me you won't go overboard. <laughs> right now at the Home Depot, Save big on flooring, appliances, windows, and much more. With no payments, no interest for 12 months on purchases of $299 or more with your Home Depot Consumer Credit Card. The Home Depot. 
You can do it. We can help. Ryan Mallett, 6'7", 252 pound freshman, is warming up on the Michigan sideline as Chad Henney, when he ran that ball the last time, was dumped out of bounds and appeared to be shaken up, but Chad's going to come back in. So he's going to tough it out. Whatever hurts, he can grimace about it, but he's coming in on a fourth down that Michigan needs 12. I just don't know if I'd like to give Oregon the ball back. with oh, They're going to have over a minute and two timeouts and on the ball at the 30-some yard line. If this is incomplete or if they don't get a first down. Henny down the middle, got his man. First down, Michigan. Giving some ground is Manningham, trying to get extra ground, and he's got a first down. So Henny stays in, he throws a strike to Manningham, and Michigan keeps on going. 17 yards, Greece on fourth and 12. Yeah, this is uh, this is a big pitch and catch right here, and then Manningham almost gives it back by retreating to get more ground. He almost gave up the first down, which is what they needed right now. Did get down to the 14-yard line. First down, Michigan, in desperate need of a touchdown here before halftime to try to get back in the ball game. Mike Hart, Hart, down to the six. The Rome Boyd, the linebacker, brought him down. Clock winding. We're under a minute. 32 to seven. Oregon leads Michigan. Michigan was ranked fifth in the country last week before being upset by Appalachian State. And now for the first time since 1967, unranked after week one. And they're not worried about where they are in the polls right now. They know they're in a dog fight or a duck fight. What do you what do you call it when ducks get in a fight? I'm not sure. But we see one right here going on. Yep. Coming up next Saturday on ABC, Pete Carroll's top-ranked Trojans, speaking of ranking, face a dangerously early season test down the road. They've got to take on Big 12 power Nebraska. Nebraska survived Wake Forest today. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. USC and Nebraska next Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on ABC and ABC HD. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein, we're in the big house in Michigan, and it is a quiet house. I'll tell you that much. 702 total yards of offense between the two teams, but it's the Oregon Ducks that have most of that. Yeah, well, Oregon has scored on six of their seven possessions. Five of their six possessions, excuse me. And we have seen some wizardry from Dennis Dixon, their quarterback. Yeah. Say that again. Wizardry. Is that a word? Okay. Yeah, it's good. Is yeah. It? No third down. It's enough to make you chew on your necklace. <laughs> <laughs> they got to get it down to the four yard line, Michigan, for a first down. They need nine yards for a touchdown. Here comes the pressure on Henny to the end zone. High, and this one not catchable by Adrian Arrington. He got away with one of those on the other end in the first quarter. And not that time. I like what Oregon did right there. They just they, they just came. They just sent them all. They said, you know, if you're going to throw that thing, you're going to have to throw it quick. And I don't think Henny got think, a chance to set himself. I think you got to go for it. Well, here, they're, they're going to. Yeah. Henny stays out there. It's fourth down, Michigan. You need, you need what, four yards for yeah. a first down and eight yards for a touchdown? Right now, they'd love to get to the four yard line. That'd help them. Only 31 seconds left in the quarter. Send them all again. They're coming. Here they come. Henny lofts it to the corner for Manningham. It's tipped, and then it's intercepted by Thurman. No, it was out of bounds. Doesn't matter. They get the ball anyway. It's Oregon ball either way. So the Ducks defense does the job again. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here you go. Take a look. They put all their eggs in this basket over here. Manningham trying to jump, and Thurman doing a nice job of arm fighting him, hand fighting. <laughs> uh, Madra shot said, going the other way. And it is. Now you got to worry about Oregon's offense. There's 24 seconds left. <laughs> they had two timeouts. <laughs> I, I've never seen this formation no, from them. No, they took a knee. <laughs> they took a knee. They say, we're going to take a big yeah. lead to halftime yeah. at Michigan Stadium on the road. The Ducks of the Pac-10, and now the Michigan Wolverines are getting booed on their home field. They head to the tunnel. 
It's going to be a 32 to 7 halftime advantage for Oregon. Michigan's got a long way to come back. Let's go down to Bonnie. Dennis Dixon's had so much success with his hands and his feet, Lloyd. Where have the defensive breakdowns been? Well, I think we've given up two big plays. Obviously, our offense has not helped us at all. Yeah, speaking it's of not just one thing. With the offense, how do you get some better protection for Chad Henney? Well, he, Chad's got to get rid of the ball a couple of times. We've turned the ball over twice. That's really been what has hurt us. Any idea what the injury is with him? Sure I do. <laughs> and I guess he's not going to tell us what it is. Nope. <laughs> Never. <laughs> so it's halftime. 32 to 7. Guys, I tell you what, we're a little bit shocked. I don't know about you. Let's check in with John and the guys in New York. Craig James and Doug Food is shocked is, is an understatement. And Lloyd Carr, what he has in the locker room, better be magic. He's, he's talking about his offense, Doug. His defense has given up 66 points in six quarters of play. Appalachian State showed their hand. They showed this defense. They spread them out and went after a Michigan kid. Last year, all we talked about was how physical the Michigan defense was. This year, spread them out, and the, the, the secondary can't hold up. And... Dixon's running wild. There used to be helmet games in the country, and Michigan was one of those helmet games when teams would walk in there and they'd see the big house and they'd see that Michigan helmet and they would melt. Oregon would have melted in the past. That's not happening now. You got an Oregon team so confident of themselves on the road that they're going for it on fourth down and two or three at the goal line. They're going for two instead of kicking extra points. It's unbelievable how much, how little respect that this Michigan team now has out in the country. And this is two weeks in a row at home getting their tail kicked. Offensively, they still got Henny. They still got Manningham, Arrington, and Hart, and have ability. It's defense. But defense is defense what's is killing terrible. them. 67 was the last time they lost four games in a row, which they're about to do if they can't come back in this one. Earlier today, West Virginia, who's moved up to number three, facing Marshall. And Pat White, we know he can do it with his arms. He can do it with his legs as well. 20 but yards here. You notice they're down 16-13, though, in the third quarter. This was not a, a, a blowout game. Marshall came and played extremely well today. Bernard Morris to Cody Slade here, and you're right. It was just 27 to 23. But then running back Noel Devine goes 12 yards. True freshman out of Florida coming in. He's probably the guy that's going to take over, be the next 2,000 yard back for Slayton. Now Slayton finally got himself going. It was middle of the game. He only had like 10 yards of offense, and he ends up with 150 or plus. So Slayton and White both over 150 yards. Slayton 144 of those yards in the second half, as you said. Still coming up, we will talk Michigan and Oregon some more, plus some more highlights in the Cooper Tires Halftime Report. Nissan engineers know the backbone of any truck is its frame. That's why the Nissan Titan's frame is fully boxed. Unlike competitor C frames that are prone to flexing, our box frame is the strongest truck frame we've ever built. Just one more reason is the Titan of trucks. The new 2008 full-size Nissan Titan. Now get up to $3,500 Nissan cashback or 1.9% APR financing. The nickel started. Well, cash rewards have restrictions. See, this is an incisor, not a molar. Plus, there's a seven-tooth minimum before the payouts get progressively larger. Additional terms and conditions may apply. Cashback is only applicable for deciduous teeth lacking decay or discoloration. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, I know. Is this how your cash rewards card treats you? Introducing no-hassle cash rewards. Earn cash on every purchase, everywhere, plus a 25% annual bonus. What's in your wallet? <laughs> today Peyton's calling an audible hey you come here it's 28 to 3 if you had an NFL Sunday ticket from direct TV you can watch up to 14 games every Sunday so instead of watching this you watch my brother Eli play against the Cowboys oh I'm gonna run <laughs> actually I think I'll pass pump fake touchdown join now and get four months free of our best TV package when you buy NFL Sunday ticket only on direct TV it comes from stadium stairs at 5 in the morning. From suicides to your lung scream uncle. And two-a-days when it's hot enough to fry an egg on your forehead. It's sweat. And there's more to sweat than just water. No wonder, no water, no flavored water, no other sports drink on the planet helps put back what sweat takes out better than Gatorade.
we advance in leaps and bounds. From generation to generation. At Acura, we help people advance. From where they are to where they could be. Acura. Advance. Sterling Savings Bank, the perfect fit bank. to the Cooper Tires Halftime Report. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. And what a first half this has been for Dennis Dixon and his Ducks. 32 to 7 is the lead in the big house. Michigan trying to avoid losing the second consecutive game to start the season. We'll talk much more about that later, but let's begin with Oklahoma, a team that scored 79 points last week against North Texas. Facing Miami today be a lot tougher, right? Well, Sam Bradford, 24 yards to Malcolm Kelly, who was terrific When's today. When's the last time you could see an OU quarterback against a Miami team just stand there and look at where he's going to throw the ball and deliver it without getting hit? He stood there flat-footed all day, very comfortable throwing the football. Fumble by Javaris James, recovered by Reggie Smith, returns this one 60 one yards for a touchdown as Oklahoma starts to pull away. 21 to 3 is the score there. Sam Bradford again to Malcolm Kelly. You with three on the day. Okay, uh, he, he's looked great. A lot of poise the last two weeks. Stands there very comfortable in the pocket. Kelly, soft hands, big play receiver. 51 after putting up 79 last week. Akron and Ohio State. Beanie Wells tackled in the end zone by Brian Stokes. That's a safety, so Akron has a 2-0 lead. Unfortunately, those were the only points he'd get. Todd Beckman, seven yards to Brandon Sane. You know what, but they just didn't have it on offense today. Beckman last week looked really good. It wasn't such a coordinated effort today. In Ohio State, they get by the zips, but it wasn't real, real pretty. Rubisky with the reception on that touchdown play, as you said, just a 20-2 win. Nebraska and Wake Forest, this one turned out to be a very good game. Brett Hodges... Goes 61 yards here, but hauled in and in for the touchdown. Almost. He almost got in. The ball went out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds at the one. On third down, they finally punch it in, and Wake Forest came to play. Doug Flutie's old pet peeve, sticking that football out of uh, the end zone. Oh, yeah. Sam just, Keller. Just it out of bounds on your own, will you? 25 yards to Sean Hill, and then Marlon Lucky, 22-yard touchdown run. And this was when Wake was up 17-13 in the third quarter. Bill Callahan just glad to get out of there with a W. Yeah, good interception in the end zone, too, that sealed that victory. Washington against Boise State. Jake Walker, six yards. Watch the tough run to get it in. He's a quarterback. He's a freshman. You know what? This guy here has got a lot of praise and poise coming his direction. A lot of W's. How about the halfback pass here, Flutie man? Unbelievable. Fooled everybody. Nobody around. But getting back to Locker, he's, he runs like Tebow. He throws the ball down the field. He's got a tremendous arm, a great field. This kid's going to be something special. Well, there's the arm, you see, and he gets a little luck as the defenders collide. Marcel Reese takes it in. 24 to 10 is the lead for Washington. Cal, meanwhile, in a tough one against Colorado State, 34 to 28. Uh, just briefly, can't say enough about Washington and what they got going on there. I really high on Ty Willingham's team. Both weeks, they've looked exceptionally mm -hmm. strong offensively. Washington turning things around, perhaps in the Pac-10. We'll see as the season continues along. Ah, the old Statue of Liberty. That time they used it. The time before, they faked it for a touchdown. The Cooper Tires Halftime Report. Brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. that are tough. I'm comfortable in jeans that fit great. I'm comfortable in Wrangler. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Built tough with 14-ounce heavyweight denim. Built comfortable with a stonewashed finish and relaxed fit. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Satisfaction guaranteed. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. It's 
not just a jersey. It's a symbol of who we are. A community of coaches, student athletes, and fans. Bound together by a code of conduct. International Raceway. It is the final regular season race of the year before we begin the 10 race chase to the next L Cup. The drama is building. Three drivers are on the bubble to make NASCAR's version of the playoffs. Kurt Busch must finish 36, Kevin Harvick 32nd, and fan favorite Dale Earnhardt Jr. needs to pull off racing version of the Hail Mary to make it to the chase. It's the Chevy Rock and Roll 400. 400 laps of slip and sliding short track action in Richmond, Virginia. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. As you guys also know, it's the last few races for Dale Jr. with the number eight on his car. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Thing. I didn't know there was a bubble in that car. Stepmother will not let him have number eight. Can't believe it. All right, Texas A&M facing Fresno State this afternoon. Texas A&M and Dennis Franchione looking for a good start. Jaworski Lane. 18 yards, a powerful run. Said he lost weight. I don't know how much and where he put it, but he used all of it he had right there to get in the end zone. Stephen McGee in this offense, the Aggies were hoping McGee would be efficient. Out in the flat, Mike Goodson. Goodson into the touchdown. Knees healthy. Goodson with his speed. Good offense. NC State against Doug Flutie's Boston College squad. Harrison Beck. Two yards on this rush. I'll tell you what, Beck has a lot of potential. He throws the ball extremely well. He moves well. He just got to throw it to the right jerseys. Well, he didn't this time. Dunbar with the interception. Takes it in, and it's a 14-10 game at that point. Boston College, I mean, for a while, you like Matt Ryan as a chance for a Heisman Trophy hopeful, but this afternoon, he yeah. struggled a bit. He may be, in, he probably is the best quarterback in the ACC, but right now, Matt Ryan, today, NC State's doing a good job with him and holding the numbers down, but he is definitely the best quarterback in the ACC. You, you can't have an off day if you want to win the Heisman Trophy, and you yeah. can't have a homer working for you on the set either. <laughs> okay, I Just wanna, give me a reason. I want to know this from you guys. What in the heck is going on in college football right now? Why is Michigan... UAB yeah. beating FSU. 10-0 yeah. first quarter. Figure that out. I'm asking you to figure it out. I, I, I don't know. So I'm we're going to just we're relegate. Gonna lose. Teams lose to the 1AA team, they get relegated to 1AA. 1AA. And then we bring another one up. All right. Appalachian State may be up in Division 1A, that, according to Doug Flute. Anyway, it's the first <laughs> weekend of National Football League coverage on ABC and ESPN. For more, let's join Chris Berman. Thank you. Join us, won't you, on Sunday NFL Countdown. We kick off with lots. Jets head coach Eric Mangini showed some range this offseason. Whether it was a cameo on Sesame Street or The Sopranos, we'll profile the man behind Mangenius. LaDainian Tomlinson climbed into the record books in 2006. Emmett Smith finds out about the unique training regimen that's preparing LT for the season. And Kenny Main visits Seattle to find out how a slip and slide helps the Seahawks quarterbacks at practice. That's all ahead on Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. Eastern. Now let's send it to Mike Tirico and the Monday Night Football crew. Chris, thanks. We open the Monday night season with a doubleheader, and the first game matches the last two champs of the AFC North. And if you look at key offseason acquisitions, maybe the biggest in this division was Baltimore getting Willis McGahee via trade from Buffalo. The running back could make a difference. Uh, he will make a difference. When you look at his Ravens offense, I call it a blacksmith style of offense. They love to hammer the football in the running game between the tackles. In fact, last season, they went outside only 10% of the time. That's the fewest running plays to the outside of any team in the National Football League. Willis McGahee now gives them that quickness to get to the outside. Ravens won 13 games, try to upgrade their offense with a couple of teams that, I guess, opposites attract. Oh, yes. We English majors like to say this is a game fraught with irony. Brian Billick, when he got the job at Baltimore, came with a reputation as an offensive genius. He's really never had much of an offense. His defense has been great because it was built there by Marvin Lewis, who then left to go to Cincinnati with the reputation as a defensive genius. His defense has never been great. Go figure. Yeah, talk about must-see TV. Chad Johnson and Ray Lewis on the field at oh, the 
the same yeah. time when the Bengals have the ball. See you at 7 Eastern. Note the start time Monday night. Mike, thanks a lot. Oh, if we only had the field, Mike. ESPN on ABC continues in a moment. What's that? Coming up with new ideas. Why don't you just call it that? This is different. We need to rethink the way we do things. Structure. Process. We need to innovate. How? We haven't ideated that yet. Good luck. Thanks. The Cooper Tires Halftime Report. Brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. On Wednesday, September 26th, Nick George will take a job he doesn't want, working for a family he doesn't like. This is our family lawyer, and you better do what he says. When you work for the Darlings, you gotta keep their secrets from becoming scandals. Could you give her this check for me? No, I'm not gonna give a hooker a check. It sounds so dirty. Well, what the hell is it, Pat, if it's not dirty? Stop the car. Dirty Sexy Money. Series premiere Wednesday, September 26th at 10:9 Central. Part of Premier Week on ABC. Start here. ESPN on ABC, if you wanted an example of just how dominating Oregon has been in this game, look at that offensive line explosion. That was a fourth and two for Jonathan Stewart. He takes it. We're taking a lot of credit away from Michigan for the way they've played the last two weeks, but let's give some credit to Oregon. And how about this Oregon offense? It's an offense that has a new offensive coordinator. Gary Croton left. So Mike Bellotti had to go find a new coordinator. He got Chip Kelly out of the University of New Hampshire. And, and that offense over there, seven of the last eight years, 400-plus yards a game. The last four years, they've averaged 30 points per game. So he's got an offense, a new guy over there. Oregon, we can rip Michigan all we want to, but we've got an offensive coordinator here, a new guy, mm -hmm. comes into the big house putting up points. By spreading them out, it's showing their hand. And Michigan's got to show some pride. That's the bottom line here. The Michigan football team that everybody expected to see last week is not on that field. They've got to come out, finish a drive, and play a little bit of defense and hit somebody. Well, with, uh, without question, Michigan has been exposed. Appalachian State was no fluke. They were obviously the better team in that game last week the second half still to come we'll find out if the Wolverines do have any pride or will they get blown out sometimes when you're together you just can't stand the idea of being apart Volkswagen. It gets into you. I have no idea how this happens. <laughs> Ooh, the never ending pasta bowl is going on. Oh, you didn't know? No, no, I had no idea. <laughs> Olive Garden's never ending pasta bowl with new smoked mozzarella Alfredo. Pick any sauce and pasta combination, then another. Just $8.95. Have all you want. For a girl like her, falling for a guy can be a little dangerous. On September 21st. Yeah. Not now. Get ready for a shocking good time. Good luck, Chuck. Rated R, September 21st. Ooga, chaka, ooga, ooga. Ah, hooked on a feeling. This only sets us back about 10,000 years. That you're in love with me. There's no way that we invented the wheel. Karaoke, possibly, but the wheel. Caveman, just like you and me, only hairier. Premieres Tuesday, October 2nd, 8, 7 central on ABC. Start here. Brakes. The most important system in your car. If you're experiencing symptoms of worn brakes, noise or grinding, 
pulsation, brake grab, or if your brake pedal needs excessive pressure, come into Les Schwab for a free brake inspection. If your brakes need service, we do it right, we do it complete. Repairing, resurfacing, replacing, and adjusting, all backed by our full parts and labor guarantee. Les Schwab Brake Service. If we can't guarantee it, we won't sell it. But I'm more than just a checkbook, because I come with things like a free check card, free direct deposit, one, two, free bill pay. Don't forget that nice green leather jacket. Um, actually, it's final. But thank you, Bob. Stain resistant. Perfect Fit Checking. Only from Sterling. The Perfect Fit Bank. The Trunk Monkey has done such a great job helping our customers on the road, we decided to see what he could do at the dealership. How do we boost the sales, folks? Any ideas? Anyone? Is this your phone number? The price you see is the price you pay. I'll take that one. Let's just hope he doesn't quit his day job. Suburban Auto Group, home of the Trunk Monkey. Meteorologist Rhonda Shelby, weekday mornings on K2 News. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. I don't know if that's the best idea by Jeremiah Johnson. We still got a half of football, but so far the Ducks have been hammering the Michigan Wolverines in front of their hometown crowd. It is 32 to 7 at halftime. Welcome back to the big house, a quiet house, everybody. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie will join us in a minute. I don't know, uh, uh, Dennis Dixon, if we can vote for him for Pac-10 Player of the Year at this point <laughs> in week two. <laughs> it's looked pretty good. Where do I sign up for this style of <laughs> offense? I've uh, not seen a lot of this, but I know Michigan has seen it the last two weeks, Paul, and uh, I don't think they want to see it again the rest of the year. And the ball's going to go out to the back of the end zone. And let's check in with Bonnie. Okay, sort of have an injury update on Chad Henney. Ryan Mallett will be the quarterback for Michigan in the second half. Henney will not come out of the locker room. I just had a somewhat constructive conversation with Paul Schmidt, the uh, trainer for Michigan. He said they don't expect it to be a long-term lower leg injury, but he didn't tell me whether it was severe enough to warrant x-rays or an MRI. All we do know is that he's done for the day, but Schmidt did emphasize they don't feel this is a long-term injury for Chad Henney. Brad. Okay, Bonnie, thanks. Wow, so Chad Henney starts his day tying the career touchdown mark here at Michigan and may end his day in the trainer's room. Anyway, it's Oregon offensively from the 20 to start things off. And much as they did in the first half, getting big chunks of yardage from Jonathan Stewart. Uh, first down for Stewart, uh, the first play of the third quarter. Chad Henney in that first half, I mentioned he threw a touchdown pass, and he got banged around in the pocket a little bit, especially under some heavy pressure, and this might have been the play where he was shaken up the first time because he limped a little bit when he got up off that one. And then I thought the scramble on the sideline where he got knocked out of bounds in yeah. front of his own bench didn't help it. Yeah, I thought that was where he... Uh, this throw complete play. out. Jason Williams. Williams, the big wide out, has got nine more. So Oregon, they didn't slow down in the locker room at halftime, did they? And, and, and neither is Dennis Dixon. No. Now, I'm really impressed with this kid. If he goes up against uh, USC and plays this type of... Uh, remember the coaches of... Uh, Michigan said they went and looked at USC and said, how did USC defense this offense? And they said, well, very patiently. They gave him some yardage, they gave him yardage, they gave him yardage, yardage, and sooner or later, they'd stop themselves last year. This year, not making the mistakes. Our Pacific Life Game summary, statistically in the first half, Oregon had 390 yards of total offense, and Dixon had 293 of that himself. You see Michigan had the time of possession, but both those turnovers in Oregon territory, and so all their trips into Oregon territory only paid off with one touchdown. On short yardage, Michigan's defense holds this time. Sean Crable and John Thompson answer the call, and Oregon, believe it or not, is going to have to punt. Well, Oregon a week ago, Brad, they did not turn the ball over. This is and the in first... this game, they haven't turned it over either. Excuse me, Paul. It's the first punt of the game for Oregon. 
He might have forgotten how to punt. We'll find out. Josh Syria will kick. And it's Greg Matthews back deep for Michigan. Josh Syria. Here's an interesting looking Oregon. punt formation again for the second week in a row. Oregon and kicks. And they're going to take a timeout. They might have been a guy short, were they? Timeout, Oregon. They'll punt it, we assume, when we come back. HD? HD. Thoughts? Lots of thoughts. LCD, plasma. Keep us around sound, head spinning. <laughs> Deep breath. Likes? Cowboy explosions, touchdown robots. Cooking, tear jerkers, crime dramas. Sing along musicals. <laughs> this system. Hi. Mechanically inclined? Emergency room inclined. We install. High five. We pledge a complete home theater experience. And now get no interest financing for three years on home theaters $9.99 and up. That's HD done right. At Best Buy. exactly why it happens but when you get into a Volkswagen it gets into you prices they got in here eight dollar candy bar eleven dollars for a can of two now it's prices like these that's keeping folks from living the high life sir where's your beer section thank you a good, honest beer at a tasty price. That's what we stand for. Clean up on our common sense. Right, let me grab this. That's how we do it. Get in and out, boy. You just lost your right to sell Miller High Life is what you did. After three billion years, three stars are about to shine. I'm surprised at how much the camera captures sort of my inherent good looks. I look good. Caveman premieres Tuesday, October 2nd, 8, 7 central on ABC. This telecast is available on ABC HD, presented by DLP Picture Technology. Packed house at Michigan Stadium, and they're seeing Oregon punt. At least we expect a punt for the first time today. They were a man short. That's why they called the timeout on their punt team. Syria hangs it up high. Matthews is calling for a fair catch, and will take it at about the 17-yard line. So... Here's the story. Come out with a freshman quarterback, Ryan Mallett, all six, seven of them. And you just go out and say, well, our starters hurt. You're a freshman. You're playing for the first time. You're down 25. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, and those numbers are high school numbers. And so you can just kind of forget about them because um, he hasn't done it at this level. And this is a whole new thing right here. Well, you give the ball to 20 a lot, even though you're down by 25, you still give it to him. Now the crowd wanted him, I guess, or they're just trying to boost his confidence. Here's his first snap, and it's Hart, as Paul said, but he runs right into the thick of that Oregon defense again and drops him for a yard loss. You talk about your out of whack statistics. How about 28 plays in duck territory and seven points to show for it? Well, Michigan moved the ball. They got down in the. They had the ball nine plays, 10 plays, 12 plays, seven plays, and only had one touchdown to show for it. So second down and 11. Let's see if Mallet will put it up for the first time. Nope, they're going to keep it on the ground in his heart. And Mike's tripped up, had a little bit of an opening. He tripped over his own blocker, Mike uh, Massey, the tight end. And now Hart's slow to get up. Oh, my goodness. Can the wheels fall off any worse? Oh boy. Man, the seniors are falling oh. like flies right now. And Mike's upset he wouldn't throw yeah, a helmet unless it that's, hurts. That's a good indication right there. We take another look, and it was basically Massey trying to block for him, and kind of his rear end got him again on that thigh. And we'll see if he can come back. So now it's Brandon Miner. This is a whole different backfield, folks, than what we started the game with. Mallet to throw fires high almost picked off on the ricochet Manningham the intended receiver so it's three and outs for the freshman quarterback but it was two handoffs to Hart, and now you got to wonder 
What else can go wrong for Michigan? Well, this isn't the way you want to start your college career. 25 points down against a team that you know that can score every time they touch the ball. Mike's trying to walk it off. He seems to be walking pretty well there. Mesco to punt. Andy O'Brown is back deep. High towering kick again. Brown waits and gets wrapped up. Nice punt coverage down there. Brandon Harrison was part of it. 51-yard kick and no return. We'll be returning. Right now, the fans are wondering if they're going to be returning back here for Notre Dame next week if things don't start going better. You feel like singing a song You want other people to sing along Just sing what you feel when you get into a Volkswagen, it gets into you. With Verizon Wireless, Brent Hardy can send text, pics, and video messages unlimitedly. And during prom season, that's exactly what he did. Sending proposals, photos, and proof of dance skills to everyone in the Tri-County area. Now Brett has options, but not nearly enough corsages. Because with the Verizon Wireless Premium Plan, unlimited messaging, navigating, access to videos, and more are all included. Sign up today and buy the sleeker Razor 2. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. Yeah, this head ball coach. Hey, I told you he could really go. Promise me you won't go overboard. <laughs> right now at the Home Depot, save big on flooring, appliances, windows, and much more. With no payments, no interest for 12 months on purchases of $2.99 or more with your Home Depot consumer credit card. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Presentation of ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Volkswagen. When you get into a Volkswagen, it gets into you. Miller High Life, good, honest beer at a tasty price. And Verizon Wireless. University of Michigan Department of Chemistry is distinguished by a tradition of innovation dating back to its founding in 1844. I don't know if they can cook something up over there to give their boys right now. They need some chemistry. They it's 32 to 7. They need something. First down. Dixon wants to throw. Flags down. It's going to be a holding call. Dixon coming back the other way, and he's dropped at the 20 yard line. So this is going to be a loss either way, whether yeah, the penalty is accepted or not. Yeah, I think Michigan, if it's holding. They'll probably refuse this I one. would refuse it yeah. and make it a second down and way back at the 20 anyway. Holding, 71 offense. Penalty is declined. Second down. Loss of 12, so they will take the down instead. Hey, by, is that the worst play that Oregon's run offensively uh, all day? Without a doubt. Huh? Loss of a dozen. Gives them more room to work now. <laughs> <laughs> From the 20. And a handoff inside of Stewart. Stewart, some tough yards. Got about for the 24. Matt Wider's got an update in New York. Matt, what do you got? Well, our nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week is Oklahoma's Malcolm Kelly. Three touchdowns in the Sooners' spanking of Miami this afternoon. To cast your vote, text vote date 7654 in your AT&T wireless telephone. Maybe you want to vote in Dennis Dixon. I was just going to say, he's got my vote already. we got a long ways to go. He's back to throw, and it's down, in and out of the hands of Jason Williams. So... 
Fourth down, and Oregon Dixon, has to punt again. Dixon put the money ball right on the money. Yeah, but that wouldn't have been a first down. As uh, Greasy, he was he was about six yards short. Well, he catches the ball and runs six yards, and they make a first down. <laughs> well, we play four minutes into the third quarter. Our first three and out for Oregon, guys. Matthews, another nice punt. Matthews might have a chance at this one, though. He will at the 27. And goes down to about the 39. Whoop. Still going at it. I think the forward progress was out to about the 39-yard line, though. Well, don't forget, Monday Night Football returns to ESPN and kicks off with a doubleheader. 7 o'clock Eastern. It'll be the Ravens taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Carson Palmer and Rudy Johnson and all the rest. And then Matt Leinart will tee it up. And they take on Alex Smith and the San Francisco 49ers in the doubleheader nightcap. Don't miss the return of Monday Night Football on ESPN just two days away. Alex Smith, Utah. Mm -hmm. Used to run the <laughs> little bit of spread stuff. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll go to get, get around to that in the pros pretty yeah. soon. Tim Tebow down at Florida now that he's the man. Kind of running the same sort of Urban Meyer stuff. I don't think this style would last in the pros. I think the quarterbacks would get hurt running this much. Ooh. There's a hurting. Kubuafu with a big hit on Brandon Miner. So Greece. Mike Hart is coming back out right now, guys. All right, but what, what does this do with you got a brand new quarterback? A kid really can't take that many snaps. He snaps. He's a true freshman. Uh, Hart's in and out, but he's back in the game. Asked, now. How asked, does it change? I asked Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator, that yesterday. If you had to go for the second guy, he said the offensive package would shrink tremendously. He said, we didn't have this much offense four years ago when Henny was a freshman. He says, this kid now comes in, and we've got all this stuff. We can't ask, ask him to run all this stuff. It's got a small package just for him. Here's part of the package, second and 12. The throw, though, is only back to the original line of scrimmage to Manningham. So both his throws have gone Manningham's direction. It's going to bring up third down and long. Plus they do a, got a completion, but plus they do a, a lot of checking off at the line of scrimmage, get you out of a bad play into a good play. This kid doesn't uh, doesn't have the knowledge yet to be able to do that. Well, obviously, when you throw a pass, it's a one-yard loss. How about how about Oregon defensively? I mean, they came in here. Their offense was uh, was the touted group. The defensive secondary was good, but their front seven is playing really well. Sacks and takeaways. Third down now in the shotgun is Mallet, the freshman. Out of Texarkana, Arkansas. Back to throw, plenty of time, deep middle, tipped, intercepted, going the other way. Jarris Bird. Bird weaves his way back to about where the Michigan line of scrimmage was a 21 yard return. That was Manningham's fault all the way. Ball was right in his hands, tipped it up, and now the Ducks have their seventh takeaway of the season after uh, finishing minus 10 last year. And I don't know if Bird was shaken up or they're just happy, but you got a duck carrying a bird out there <laughs> off to the sideline. <laughs> the protection is there. He's got plenty of time to throw. Good arm. And when it was tipped, Bird was yeah, the man in midair there to get it. And now they've got a first down at the Michigan 37. And for them at the 37s, like knocking on the door, the way they've been playing. They fake the end around. Dixon down the middle, and he threw it behind his intended receiver, Jason Williams. That's one of the few times Dennis Dixon hasn't completed a pass, but boy, he's done a lot of things for that head coach right there. Magic with the ball in his hands. I think Dennis is as fleet of foot and as nifty a runner, as gifted an athlete as I've had the opportunity to coach. Um, he's getting more confident in when to run and feeling good about running. He has run very well, not only last week, but today again. And he's been a very confident player so far this game. Talking to uh, Mike Bellotti after halftime, Brad, he told me that Dennis's decision-making has been exceptional, so much so he thinks this is the best game he's ever seen him have. I said, why? And he's like, well, he's a fifth-year senior, three years in the system, and it really is all about trust, trusting his line, trusting his receivers are going to be where they're supposed to be, and most important, having trust in himself. Boy, he's doing it all right now. Third down, they're going to bring some pressure on him here, and he throws complete again. First down, got it to Ed Dixon. 
the tight end. That's the first time Dixon's touched it since he ran in for a two-point conversion back in the first quarter. 8.22 remaining in the third quarter. If you're just joining us, a shocked, packed house at Michigan Stadium is watching for the second week in a row. Oregon doing basically what Appalachian State did last week, only probably doing it better. It's 32-7, to Oregon in front. Five wide receivers. With Dixon at the controls on first down at the Michigan 22. Going to try to throw a slip screen. What a catch, one-handed. Not going to get much out of it, but <laughs> Derek Jones went up and got that one with one hand. Dennis Dixon, he has done a little bit of everything. How about this one? That was the Statue of Liberty that Stewart ran and almost scored on. And then Dennis had me on this one. He's just going to walk in, and I had the wrong guy with the ball, and <laughs> so did Michigan, actually. They reacted about the same way I did, the Michigan defense, that is. On second down. Straight up the middle, and almost a first down it might be for Jeremiah Johnson. Got it down near the 12-yard line. Following, following up with... with what Bonnie was talking about, with uh, Bilotti talking about, this is one of the probably the best game that Dennis Dixon's ever had. They won. They started last year seven and two, lost the last four games of the season. Had a lot of injury. A lot problems. of injuries, a yeah. lot of turnovers, a lot of bad decisions by the quarterback. In fact, Dennis Dixon was benched the last two ball games, and and Leaf was in there for the last two ball games. I don't think you'll ever see the bench this year. Got about a yard. And, of course, USC is number one in the country, and they're idle. But you've got to start wondering about where Oregon fits into the Pac-10 and, in the big picture, where they fit in in the top 25. I think they belong after watching them today. Cal uh, winning today so far, and they're ranked 10th, UCLA 13th. USC, of course, everybody's unanimous number one. And they're off this week. And they but are I, idle, right? You know, I, I would, you know, I've never, we haven't seen Oregon much, and uh, they are definitely a top 25 team. Johnson trying to cut it to the outside. He's got a blocker in front of him inside the 10. And he's all the way down near. And the ball came out. The ball is out and Michigan's got it. Fumbled near the end of the run trying to get extra yardage. That, that is what happened to Oregon the last four games of last year. Poor decisions and lots of turnovers. And you just can't do that. They did not do that in the first half when they just ran Michigan right off of this field. Let's but see at the end of the play here, the hit comes from behind from Engelman. Engelman. And then Brandon Harrison says, I got it. I got it. And he does. Right in the intertwined legs uh, of Johnson. So Michigan gets a break. That's the only turnover today by Oregon. Let's see if the Wolverines can take it down. 94 yards and try to work their way back into the football game. Well, Hart's not in the game now. Minor is number four, so we still don't know how badly Hart got hurt. Penalty markers down. But Bonnie. I can tell you guys have been watching Mike Hart. He's been on the bicycle pedaling backwards to try to keep that bruised thigh a little bit loose. He was yelling at the equipment guys before because he wanted to get bigger and thicker thigh pads. They actually didn't have them, so the equipment guys had to run upstairs and get the uh, the pads he was looking for. But you know this guy's a senior. He came back to try to accomplish the national championship. Those hopes obviously dash now, but there's no way Mike Hart is coming out of this game unless he is physically crippled. And he's still on the sideline, but now they're backed up, and Miner, the guy that's in for him, is in the end zone to take this handoff. And come out across the original line of scrimmage, got out to maybe the nine before Bacon put him down. Well, this offense is, is you talk about Michigan's offense without Hart and Henny. Without Henny, it would be tough. You know that three-way light bulb I was talking about earlier? Yeah. It's out. like a little Christmas light right now with <laughs> yeah. both those guys out. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and a true freshman at quarterback. I mean, this this offense right now is really limited with the personnel that they have at the skill positions. High backfield now as they bring in a fullback. Quick throw. Out. It's Manningham who's been the guy he keeps throwing it to, but it only picked up four more. Miscues today. There have been a few, including interception. That one went back 55 yards, led to a field goal. And Carlos Brown just trying to spell Mike Hart for a breather. Fumble on his first carry. And then the ricochet a little while ago in the interception. And 32 to 7 in front of a stunned crowd in Michigan. 
little draw play to Miner. He's got a first down out across the 20 to the 22 yard line. So Miner, that's his best run of the day. But we're yep. under five and a half to go in the third. It's not that he doesn't have. Mallet doesn't have an offensive line. They've got a, a, a very, very good offensive line on the left side. On the right side, you have a lot of new people over there that people didn't mention. They thought, well, we got a big offensive line because we have two All-Americans, or basically All-Americans, Long and Kraus on one side. But the other side is not that strong. Here's Miner, and he's coming to the weaker of the two sides, and he goes down in a hurry. And there's a holding penalty. Right in the middle of things. Michigan, after getting its first first down of the half, now is going to back themselves up if indeed this is a holding call, and it is. So, of course, Michigan ranked fifth in the country last week before the upset by Appalachian State. And so this week, compared to last week, Michigan fell all the way out of the top 25, as I'm sure you all know. There's a tie for fifth. That's what the little T5 is between Oklahoma and Wisconsin. Oklahoma winning today USC idol and we told you that uh, LSU and Virginia Tech get together down in the Bayou tonight first team since Oklahoma in 68 to drop out of the poll from the top five that's a long time ago and and the first team to get beat by a division one double a T school right and with what's going on here it's taken away a little bit of the shine that Appalachian State that victory they had last week now the next team comes in here and they do the same oh, yeah, thing you're right and, and, and beating Michigan. Oh boy, now fumble in midair on a bad exchange. Mallet, I think, got it back. He did. He was going to throw it before he had it. Yeah. And you want to get those guys untangled right now. He's got enough on his plate without worrying about getting a finger broken in a fumble situation. College football uh, tonight, we mentioned Virginia Tech and LSU. They get together at 9 15. That's after Notre Dame and Penn State do battle. Joe Pa. Getting together with the Fighting Irish. And then Virginia Tech, number nine, LSU, number two. Getting together. Primetime presented by Hampton tonight on ESPN. A couple of good games. Notre Dame starting a freshman quarterback. Jimmy Clausen. His brothers both played. And they tried a little draw trap to Minor, and that didn't go anywhere either. And now the Boo Birds are out again. They want Michigan to throw on every snap, but they maybe don't know that number 15 doesn't have the whole playbook in his head. Yeah. You know, that we, we looked at it because in H Henny has been playing ever since his freshman year, the first game, okay? So if something would happen to Mallet, where do they go? Home? <laughs> they don't want that to happen. <laughs> no, no, no. You got to take a timeout somewhere <laughs> Fifth time that Michigan has had a third and ten or longer. Well, now it's going to show his arm off. Got Manningham out there. Tips. Almost caught. And he can throw it a long ways. Chad Henney's the first guy to say that Mallet has got all the tools. He's mobile enough despite the fact he's 6'7 and 250 pounds, and he's got a big time arm. He threw that ball 65 yards down the field, and then he threw it to the sideline. Yeah. So probably another 75 yards on that throw. And now they'll try to punt it about 85 yards. Mesco in to kick from his own end zone. And you don't want another disaster to happen like a block punt in your own end zone when things are already going bad. So let's see how the Michigan front holds up for Mesco. He got it out of there. High kick. Not one of his longest ones of the day. And... Nice coverage again on the punt coverage team. No return. Stevie Brown put it on Andrew Brown. But Oregon's got the ball back and a 25-point lead here in the third quarter.
change it. Yeah, free live music and not an apple teeny in sight. Excuse me, ma'am. Two more highlights for my friends here. All right. Is this thing on? <laughs> Jack's bar, congratulations. Your support for the high life shall now be immortalized. Light it up. Woo! Why y'all let me do that? The high life is on. What about last quarter? Sales? Yeah. 4.6 million. Is that gross or not? I was net. Well, I bet you get a nice bonus. So that's good. Again, that's very impressive. Mm -hmm. We're hoping for 20%. You know what? Those numbers are very different. Hey, get off my car. Thank you. Uh, can I get you anything else? No, I think I'm good. Okay. Get free one-on-one -on -one financial guidance at every Citibank branch. Personal life to help you turn your dreams into realities. Come to City and let's get it done. Ravens Bengals at 7, Cardinals 49ers at 10:15, Monday on ESPN. So Oregon out. Good field position for Dixon and company at the 49-yard line. Straight up the middle is Stewart. And Stewart's got five more. 101 for Stewart now. That'll make news in the Pac-10. Some of the other Pac-10 news and notes. 34 straight home wins. For USC, their idol this week, number one, Coach Erickson. Coach Erickson is back. In the back team. Gets a win. Dixon wants to go deep. He's got a man out there, and Jason Williams perfectly in stride for the touchdown. I'm impressed with this Dixon kid. <laughs> He's thrown three of the best balls I think I've ever seen all in one day. 46 more yards, touchdown. And it ain't getting any better. For the Wolverines and they're faithful, but the Duck fans are loving it. Well, I, I just remember the conversation we had with uh, Bellotti the other day with, when uh, Greasy said, "Well, what you need is you need a, a running quarterback that can throw a little bit." Bellotti said, "No, we need a throwing quarterback that can run a little bit, and this guy can throw the ball." Two-play drive, 51 yards, touchdown, extra point, up and good. But I, I like what Bellotti said coming out of halftime. He said, this is the best game that Dennis Dixon has ever had telling Bonnie when he came out. Well, he's thrown for three. He's run for one. Look at the total offense we have. Woo. Down here, just going to go straight down the field. And Williams ran right by the corner. I mean, why not do that every time? I mean... If the defensive back is not going to cover you, just run straight down. If you got a quarterback with a good arm, this guy, he's 6'4", 240 pounds. 6'5", 240. 6'5", 240. And he can run. <laughs> he can really run. Yes, Johnny Sears. He had 500-plus yard games last year. Sixty-eight catches overall, almost a thousand yards. And there's what Bonnie was talking about. Mike Cart, one of the Michigan captain, uh, captains, pedaling on the sidelines. Meanwhile, this guy's just pedaling right down the field, and it hey. really doesn't matter. But he loves the left side, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, he does throw well to the left. Yeah, he does. For Michigan. You know what's really impressive about his throws is how he leads these guys. You know, he, he had to reach for him, just yeah. stuck right on their hands. I mean, they don't eat, they don't break stride at all. It's just it's a, it's a full sprint. This is, tell me this team's going to be the third or fourth best team in the Pac-10. I don't know. Huh? I don't UCLA, know. Cal, USC. Sears, now the kick return. Oh. oh man, he got upended. Did a cartwheel out to about the 23-yard line. And Michigan will try to get their offense in gear. We know one thing, they'll be in gear tonight. Final race before the chase field's locked. Three drivers vying for two spots. Dale Jr. races his way into the chase. It all comes down to Chevy Rock and Roll 400 in Richmond on ABC tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. This guy, I don't know, this guy's been more, more like an IndyCar guy today, I think. <laughs> He's weaved around, you know, he's just he's, not going in one circle. He's got it all. And he, he doesn't just go left. He can, he can go, go right. He can go NASCAR. He can go anything. <laughs> he can go open wheel. He they even have had to change his tires he today. Could, he can talk trash with the big boys. <laughs> Mallet, play action. Ryan throwing and tips. Almost intercepted by Walter Thurman. Michigan had a long ways to go to not drop to 0-2. And, and should they lose? 
It would be the first four game losing streak since 67 the first 0 and 2 home start since I was in diapers and uh, first yeah. 0 and 2 start of the season since 98 and six of their first seven games are at, at home. home. Yeah home's not to where the heart is right now and, and Mike Hart's on the sideline on the bike. There no he actually he's in the just, he's in the game. Now. Came in. And didn't get much. Well, you know, the beginning of this game when, when Greece was talking about. Oh, now game, he's up he's limping and again. now he's holding his hamstring. But when Greece said, you know, the one thing that Michigan, their offense has to keep the defense off the field. Well, their offense has put out se seven points in this game. They were in Oregon's territory a lot and could not score. The offense didn't do anything. The defense didn't do anything. Well, that just said a lot right there. Mike Hart just looked at the sideline and said, get whoever get you're out. trying to bring in out of here. It looked like he was yelling at some of his offensive he was. line, too. Yeah, he was. This guy he is was on the, Adam heart, Krause, I think. the heart and soul of this team, uh, Mike Hart. So he stays in, but it's Mallet now in the shotgun on third down and 10. Mallet flushed out of the pockets, got a man, nice throw and catch and first down. Ball came out at the end, but I think it was already down. It was. So it's going to be a first down for Michigan. Boy, I'll tell you, on this last play, you talk about hard told the guys don't, don't send anybody in. You talk about blocking. He stepped up and hammered again. Watch, watch this young man. You talk about heart with a heart. Bam! I mean, that oh, is oh. an outstanding block. Then he puts his hands in his face. That's a defensive lineman. He may have a number <laughs> like 39, but a guy weighs 280 pounds. Tukuafu, the defensive end. <laughs> Was that good? Uh-huh. Well, Mike does come out now. Miner back in at tailback. Got first down. Mallet wound up and threw it right into Tukuafu's hands and it's knocked down at the line. 116 remaining third quarter. There's Oregon unranked leading unranked Michigan 39 to 7. I don't think that unranked is going to last long for Oregon. I don't think it's going to last long either and Michigan is going to slide further down. Mm. It just takes so much to bring a, a freshman quarterback along. I mean he, he learns the routes, but you need to look, and then you're going to start to look the guys off. The guys are going to raise their hand at the line of scrimmage. You got to look them off. You got to throw around them. Your timing. And now trying to throw a screen that was blown up in the first place uh, by the Oregon defense. That one never had a chance. You know, one of the major things about this Michigan, they, the first three games, they don't play anybody in the Big Ten. So next week they play Notre Dame. I mean, they, the, then the fourth week, they play Penn State. They finally get into the Big Ten. So in all reality, if they could put anything back together again right. with this team, they still have a shot at the Big Ten to yep. win that the Big Ten championship. I don't think anybody wants to be hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get something positive. I mean, positive. after last week, and then 39-7 to here, and not only is the defense not looking good, the offense isn't looking good. Alex going to throw it deep on the sideline again. And ship, no, I guess not a flag. A little bump down there at the end. Walter Thurman was tangled up with Manningham. And so Michigan has to give it up again. Fourth down. I tell you, there must not be a whole lot going on outside the stadium because nobody's left yet. No. So Zoltan Mesco into the punt. Andy O'Brien again back deep. Punt coverage for Michigan's been good today. Give it that one. With a nice kick. And hit. This time, they do get back on top of him. Maybe a three-yard return, but not much. 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Michigan still on the short end. And time is becoming of the essence, obviously. 39 to 7, Oregon out in front. This is the fifth game in the series this is the first trip for Oregon into Michigan Stadium since 73 though and uh, the previous three times they came here they were shut out every game back in the day and then they uh, returned the favor back in uh, 2003 in Eugene when they beat Michigan 31 to 27 and Dixon brilliant today at quarterback with three touchdowns in the air Jeremiah Johnson hit and wrapped up Will Johnson made the first hit defensively and then got help from his friends on that Wolverine defense as we wind down the final seconds of the third quarter. And if you're just tuning in and you're looking up there and you're going, what are those numbers on top of the screen? 
Uh, that's 39 points for Oregon and only seven for Michigan. And they've only got 15 minutes to do something about it if they don't want to fall to 0-2. They are getting hammered. They're quacking in Ann Arbor. The Ducks up big. The NASCAR Nextel Cup Series moves to ABC. Top spots of the chase are locked, and only one race remains to make it to the final 12. Now, with the championship in sight, three drivers battle for the last chase spots. Can Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick make it off the bubble and clinch, or will Junior pull off the impossible? Every lap matters at the Chevy Rock and Roll 400 in Richmond. The NASCAR Nextel Cup Series moves to ABC tonight at 7 Eastern. Things you can do with one finger. Amuse a baby. Get to know your doctor. Save Holland. Trade stocks online globally in six different markets and local currencies. Tell your expensive broker where to go. All it takes is one finger. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. exactly why it happens but when you get into a Volkswagen it gets into you with Tough Act and Tenactin. It cools and cures most athletes' foot on the whole foot. Lamisil gel can't say that. Get boom! Tough Act and Tenactin. There are four friends living in the fast lane. Let's carpool. Tuesday, October 2nd. You simply need to talk to Lila about the way she's spending your money. No, all the money I make is our money. It always has been. The money she's making now, that's her money. They're sharing the road. Well, at least you have your money. My wife gets my checks. I don't even know how much I make. And sharing the dream. You know, marriage is a, is a game you shouldn't keep scoring. Oh, oh shut up. up. Carpoolers, a new comedy. Premieres Tuesday, October 2nd, only on ABC. Start here. Hi, I'm Dave Jackter, one of the owners of Wilsonville Toyota, and I'm proud to be able to introduce you to the newest and most advanced showroom and service facility in Oregon. Our no-bull policies mean that our lowest price is always posted on every vehicle, and one person handles your transaction from drive-up to delivery. Hey, what's this bull doing on our lot? What bull? I don't see a bull. Sorry, buddy. We don't allow any bull at Wilsonville Toyota. I gotta go to a better costume shop. This K2 program brought to you by Les Schwab Tires. And we start the fourth quarter in Ann Arbor with Oregon up big on Michigan, 39 to 7. And looking for more. Still swinging it out there in and out of the hands of Williams, who caught the long touchdown pass the last time Oregon had the ball. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Monty Bernstein, Michigan and, and their fans, their coaches, everybody's going to be, now what do we do? I mean, all the motivational stuff that Lloyd and the guys used this yeah. last week, I don't yeah. know if it's going to work again. Well, I, I, the best thing for them is not have a spread off, uh, off an yeah. option offense coming in, Notre Dame coming in next week, and they don't. Well, also, you know, you think about what the coach has said to us, too. It says, is there how much fighter is in the Jazz? Right. And we'll find out on Saturday what kind of a team we have. Well... Yeah, Coach Carr said we'll know for sure on Saturday, and uh, when the game's over, we'll know mo a lot more about my team. But he talked about, you know, it's about taking a punch and then getting up and fighting. And he said, I mean, really fight, because it's a lot easier to lay down. Well, I don't think uh, anybody's laying down by any means today, but Michigan's getting outplayed by the Oregon Ducks in the Pac-10 and getting bruised again on their own field. And this guy's doing most of the damage. Dennis Dixon, and he's going to just give this one away. Let's get an update on Penn State and the aforementioned Notre Dame. Here's Matt. That's right. Jimmy Clausen got the start for the Irish in Happy Valley, but his defense has gotten him the lead. Anthony Morelli throwing. Look at the athletic catch by Darren Walls. First career interception. He's going to make it stick all the way down the sideline. He'll cut back 73 yards on the return and a 7-0 Irish lead. A oh, big return there by the defense of Notre Dame. That's what Michigan could use a couple of here in the late stages of this ball. Johnson goes down. Charles Stewart made the stop. 
But you know, you know, Michigan came in with with a lot of offensive starters returning, and their quarterback was returning. Their three, of their top receivers, the wide receivers were returning. Mike Hart, the heart and soul of it, returned. Three starters on their offensive line, including Jake Long, who was voted the best offensive lineman in the Big Ten last year. So right. Offensively, they were set. It was defensively that they lost uh, seven, six or seven starters. Had a couple of killer turnovers today and a lot of opportunities in Oregon territory. What a stiff oh. arm that was by Johnson. Johnson in the clear. All the way down inside the 30. Boy, was that a stiff arm or what? We've got to see that again. <laughs> Brandon Harrison just got a whole mouthful, and then Johnson went 33 yards. Well, you know, this is indicative of the, what the defense today is doing. Seriously, take a look at this. Now, watch the stiff arm. Here goes Brandon Harrison on the outside. He just threw him on the ground. Just threw him on the ground. And he's only 5'10", Paul. 205 and uh, looked like with his right hand about 190 pounds of, uh, right there. Yeah, 5'10", and he can't have very long arms. He has a short jab. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. 16th play of 10 yards or more for the Oregon Ducks today. That is incredible. Unbelievable. Dixon wants to throw back the other way and does, but it's dropped by Derrick Jones incomplete. You know, Ness, one of the things when, when, you, when you look at it, it's, it's, it's bad enough to get you, you get embarrassed at home and you're losing and you're playing poorly on all sides of the ball but then you lose your quarterback we don't know how hurt Hart is or how you know how much he could play next week right. this is to me is is, is what's, what really hurts a football team you lose two of your best players on top of losing well, I think I think Michigan goes from one of the the preseason being one of the favorites in the Big Ten to now being one of the teams that you know you know you don't worry about winning the Big Ten yeah you, you look at Wisconsin you look at uh, you know Ohio State nobody knows about them because they lost so many good players and then you look at Penn State I think Wisconsin looks like the team right now if you just look at it Purdue's putting up points like crazy in the first couple of weeks Michigan State won today so did Ohio State not with resounding success but uh, they won that's all you care about first 11 games the points and then 37 per since wow bring the sticks from the far side Sean Crable down on a knee and it's another Oregon first down and then you look at you look at the Pac-10 you know we all like USC I yeah. mean uh, Pete Carroll what the job that he's done out there I mean and uh, uh, UCLA in the same town, Eaton Crow for so many years. Now they've got a pretty good football team. Cal won beat, today. Beat USC last year. I did UCLA. Cal coming on Tennessee last week. Beat them. Now seeing Oregon. Ooh. Washington's better than they were. Quite a bit better. Jay Washington with Jake Locker. Yeah, Pac 10's looking a lot better in, got, uh, in two weeks than it was two weeks ago. Dennis Erickson over at Arizona State. Down the middle, Dixon's got it. Completes to Colvin. And a pickup of about 11. And that's about 11 different guys I think he's thrown into today. There are some new blood in the uh, Pac-10, of course, too. Harbaugh at Stanford, Dennis Erickson at Arizona State, and then the Big Ten, three new coaches. Coach Lynch, after Coach Hepner passed away. Mark D'Antonio at Michigan State. And Tim Brewster at Minnesota, who got his first win today. First and goal. That's been a familiar tune today, hasn't it? For Oregon, that yep. is. Big plays and first and goal. Now, every time they they get inside the 10, Michigan's looking for that Statue yeah. of Liberty. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> I am too. I got the binoculars out I'm now. saying, what's the next progression? <laughs> the first one, he faked it and gave it to him. The second one, he didn't give it to him and he kept it himself. I think what's he got to hold one? it right between his knees and have somebody take it out of there from him. <laughs> 565 yards of offense so far for Oregon. Now that to me that's a surprise. 67 plays for Oregon, 69 for Michigan. Well, they've had they've had two two big plays, the two Johnson, long touchdown passes. And they might have another touchdown. Awful close for Johnson, not quite. It'll be third down and goal from about uh, a foot away. So just when you think Things were bad after a 34-32 loss to Appalachian State. It looks like Oregon's going into the mid-40s here, a play or two from now. And the confusion and uh, questions for Ron English and his defense will continue for another week. 
So they put it right down on about the one foot line. You know, this is almost sometimes I, I remember in the pros though we played when we played poorly, they didn't show you the film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do they do that in college? Because I wouldn't show them this one. Gets an under center and trying to sneak it in. And he did not get there. It's going to be fourth down and uh, uh, inches now if they decide to go for it. Either way, if they kick a field goal, it looks bad. If they go for a touchdown, it looks bad. And it, it's what you have to do. It's uh, part of the business. Lloyd knows that. He knows that if they go for a touchdown here from the three-inch line, it's not like Mike Bellotti is trying to put any salt in the wound or anything. But when you got the football that close, so now they'll have Johnson in the backfield with Dixon this time on fourth down and inches and it's Johnson and he got stopped so the Michigan defense held at the goal line Brandon Graham and Chris Graham combined on the stop and the place goes crazy one of the few times the bands had anything to play about today certainly not the start that Michigan and their fans expected First two games in this uh, big house. Give me your phone. Okay, there's five of us. We each get to pick our own fave five. That's 26 people we can call as much as we want. It's 25, Dad. That's so sad. Dad, if all five of us can call any five people, it's 25 people. So close. Think about it. Carry the nine. It's 26. Kids, this is exactly why you need to stay in school. Listen to your mother, stay in school. With my faves, each family member gets all the calls they want to any five people. Now Adeline for just $9.99. T-Mobile. Stick together. Would you rather sleep with Jessica Biel and get no money or sleep with one of the Golden Girls and get a million dollars? Which Golden Girl? The little one. The funny one or the sexy one? The funny one. Is the million dollars before or after taxes? Now shut up and Carpoolers, a new comedy, premieres Tuesday, October 2nd on ABC. Start here. The drama is building here in Richmond, Virginia, as 43 of the world's greatest stock car drivers are prepared to push and shove for 400 laps. Will Dale Earnhardt Jr. make it in the chase? We'll find out at 7 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. All right, Jerry, we'll look forward to that tonight. When our game is over. Now Michigan starting. Ten and a half minutes to go. Mallet. Maybe picked up a yard on the run. Our Pacific Life game summary. Things have not gone well for Michigan. That's for sure. Chad Henney has been injured today. He has thrown a touchdown pass to match the Michigan career mark of 72. But after the injury, young Ryan Mallett came in, threw a pretty good pass, but it was tipped, deflected, and intercepted. And then Dennis Dixon, who's been nothing short of brilliant today. Three touchdowns in the air, 76 yards, and a touchdown on the ground. If he's not that player of the week thing, I don't know who in the heck is. He's looking unless a lot somebody's like, uh, <laughs> Diane Fouts. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> Founcy, I don't think ran that good. I, but you know, Founcy would Founcy would look good in these duck uniforms. Oh, absolutely. You, know? I mean, you never know what you're going to get when when the ducks come out. Well, they're all in all white with the green helmet, so they came out uh, basically in the about the cleanest look you can get of the 9,000 combinations they have of uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, today they decided, the coaches and uh, the, the seniors and Coach Bellotti get together and they seniors decide decide. what combination they were going to yeah. going to wear. And today, boy, they couldn't have worn anything any better. 
All in white, including white shoes. And their shoes have been walking all over the Michigan Wolverines. Timeout taken by Michigan, a confused freshman quarterback, I'm sure. A third down for the Wolverines with nine and change remaining when we come back. Once Susie and I retire, we'll be taking trips like this whenever we want. It's a good thing we've been planning. At Pacific Life, giving you the right tools to help you meet your financial goals is what we're all about. As you look to the future, look to Pacific Life. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Give it to me, give it to me, one, two, three. Introducing Applebee's new Ultimate Trios. Great taste, great big portions, and a great price. Choose three from seven delicious options to create your ultimate flavor fest. Like our new 100% Angus beef mini bacon cheeseburgers. New crispy, plump, and spicy dynamite shrimp. And the new flame-grilled steak quesadilla tower. Ultimate Trios, ultimate platter at an unbeatable price. Only at Applebee's. Give it to me, give it to me, one, two, three. Respect and one bold taste for those who make the most of everything. This presentation of ESPN's College Football on ABC brought to you by Best Buy. Get the knowledge to send them off to college right at Best Buy. Saturn with five new models and two new hybrids. Saturn, rethink American. And Allstate, proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? The University of Michigan does not have a single official university bookstore, but there's 21 of them within the vicinity of Michigan's campus. And you can get just about anything with an M on it that you're looking for. And just after the timeout, Oregon jumped into the neutral zone and made contact. Michael Speed a little too speedy. Defense That'll give contact, Michigan maybe a first down. It was, uh, third and five, wasn't it? Well, close to it. Bill's looking at that, too. I think he stopped at the very end to say whether or not yeah. it's going to be a first down, first and down. it is. So, another sold-out crowd for the 201st straight time, over 100,000 fans. 202nd, beg your pardon. 109,733, and a bunch of them aren't very happy, except the ones that came from Oregon. And some of them have gone. There's very seldom a time you'll see empty seats in this stadium near the end of a game. But it doesn't look like Michigan's got any kind of opportunity to come back into this thing. And Oregon on the road wearing all whites with their green helmets. But one of the millions of things they can do with the combinations they have. They got yellow and green with yellow pants. They got black and green with green pants. And they got black with black pants. And then they got white with the white pants. And then you just do all this. <laughs> and... And you got something like 51, I don't know, 50 combinations. What about the like helmets? That. Do they always wear green helmets? I think helmets? they always wear the green helmets, yeah. But you saw Fauci in, uh, back in his day. They had more of the traditional looking, almost like Green Bay Packer looking colors. Yeah. But, of course, the uh, Nike folks that are closely in touch and in tune with the Oregon program have given them a lot of different things and a lot of different ways to wear them. And penalty was roughing the passer, and so it's first down, Michigan. Quick throw and a short game. Greg Matthews completes it. Oh, now that was something weird at the end of the play, and now we got a little bit of a brouhaha going on. Matthew Harper, I don't know if somebody intentionally tried to leg whip him or what, but his teammates came to his assistance immediately. And Jake Long is saying, I'm going to pick you up and put you back in the huddle if you don't get out of his face. 
Yeah, as, as Matthews was getting up. Watch the end of the play. There's Matthews. Stewart's got it made the catch. And oh, oh yeah. Him. Okay. Well, that's not good. And that's not good. So no penalty call. Matthews stays in there. Now we're going to see a penalty. <laughs> Great rush off the corner by Kenny Rowe. And now Mallet's pads are coming out of his jersey, and he's trying to get his guys lined up as fast as he can on third down and long. Mike Hart's come back out to join him. They're thinking about blitzing the Ducks, and they're going to come with an extra guy, Mallet. Throws, got a man open. Arrington, nice catch in traffic. Good toss. And Arrington really got popped. Yeah, he knew he was going to get hit, and that was a nice catch to hang on to it. And he gets up holding the back of his leg. Reminder, near the conclusion of our game today, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund for our players of the game. I know who mine is for one team already. I think you can just uh, whoop that one. Quarterback from Oregon who's been sensational. And now Mike Hart, who has tried to play on a bad leg, goes down. And Bonnie's got an update, I think, on uh, Harper. Yeah, Harper's had a great game for Oregon. The interception and the sack on a couple plays ago, he went off the field limping. I'm going to go on the other side and check, but he's not in the game right now, guys. And speaking of limping, can anything else go wrong? Jake Long has just limped off a play ago for the Michigan Wolverines. Two of their captains trying to play hobbled, and Chad Henney, their quarterback, out of the game, an un disclosed injury that's put the pressure on a freshman quarterback to try to play in this uh, biggest setting against a team that's got a 39 to 7 lead on you. Three, Three best players on offense. The yep. defense is not playing anyway. Uh, They're playing that well. Can you have a worse day? <laughs> I don't know. I think you got to do a major regrouping. I mean, you know, the, the, the players called their own meeting after last week's game, and that was Long and Henny. Going to have to have another meeting, aren't they? Or two. Matt Weiner's got another update, I think, on the Notre Dame game. Matt? That's right. Happening on ESPN right now. We showed you Notre Dame's return of an interception for a touchdown. How about Derek Williams? Dangerous Derek Williams. Under the punt, he'll go 78 yards the other way for a score. And we are back to square one at State College. It is seven all. All those young receivers of Penn State's have grown up now. And they're still yep. playing well. Neither offense has scored in that ball game. No. Thurman being helped off. That man's got to be happy right there. I Mike guess. Bellotti. What a great job he's done at Oregon. Had an opportunity to go to a lot of other places. USC, UCLA, Notre Dame, Ohio State. A couple of NFL State, people. And uh, NFL. He yeah. says, no, I want to stay right here at Oregon. Winning his coach in Oregon history. Longest tenure of any coach in the Pac-10. And he will relish win number 120 in his career about seven minutes from now, that's for sure. 13 years a head coach. Mallet going to air it out. And he overshot everybody with that one. Well, he's got a strong arm. <laughs> the only problem is, you know, you've you got to you know, tell it like it is. The kid doesn't practice that much he does especially with the first unit so he you know and then you, you don't think anything's going to ever happen to Henny because it hasn't happened in four years and now he's got to come in and play his numbers six out of 14 49 yards the interception that really was not his fault was a pretty well thrown ball that ricocheted off his receivers hands and into the Oregon secondary so that's third down and seven again and now it was Adam Krause coming out of his stance, and this is the kind of stuff that uh, drove Michigan and their coaches crazy last week. Penalties. And a guy like Krause should know. He's a senior. He knows better. This is just a lack of concentration. You know the game's over with. You're not playing well. You're frustrated. Yeah. Yep. You know, last week you were talking about the penalties. Brad, they had seven penalties, and six of them were pre-snap penalties. Yeah. And, and, you know, you're in this third and two, and all of a sudden, guy moves. Now it's third and seven. He changes your offensive play, your oh, field position. It changes everything. And now this one's third down and a dozen, when it would have been third and seven. Out of the shotgun. Look out. Look out. Throws it down the middle and kind of up for grabs and completes. Reminder, time permitting after the game, 
John Craig and Doug will be in New York and will bring you the Dell post game reports. All the scores and highlights from today's action. We've got seven minutes yeah. left here, 658. I mean, big upsets today? Right here, maybe. Yeah, well, well, really wasn't yeah. an upset, but I think Michigan was favored by a little bit. Not anymore. <laughs> nope, not anymore. Mesco to kick. And Oregon will get it back in. They would probably want to just keep it on the ground and get first downs and get out of here and head back to Eugene. Oh, got that one up in the air a little bit. Yeah, flag too. Roughing the punter. So this one's coming back. And if it's what we think it is, and it is, it should give Michigan a first down. Personal foul, roughing the kicker number 49, 15-yard penalty. Yeah, I don't think first down. I don't think they hit him. You know, I think the, the kicker slips, and because there were three guys around him, maybe I'm wrong. But I'm looking at it from this angle. Watch this. Watch what happens here. He goes. He goes there. All right. He's up in the air, and he slips, <laughs> and he trips the guy. I'd get him for roughing <laughs> the guy coming and kicking him in the ankle. They never touch this guy. This is a terrible call. Well. They deserve something. <laughs> they haven't gotten anything all day. <laughs> you were a punter. Oh, I did that a lot. I love to do that. You, you were uh... looking out for his guys. Yeah. Yep. Mallet. Miner trying to cut it outside. And Oregon's defense has been exceptional today. They Jerome really Boyd have. made they the really play have. that time. You know, they, last week they played Houston. And uh, Houston's got one of these quirky offense that's right also. really quirky you know I, I mean, I'm getting more and more I get like these things <laughs> you know uh, Utah Utah started it out there you know West Virginia's got something something like this where they use three wide one back and the quarterback can run all over the place Urban Meyer's got something like this down in Florida he's using now Malik, down the middle incomplete intended for his tight end and Bob's going to give us the best buy Playbook. Well, one of these the touchdowns, let's go back and take a look. Uh, there was um, man coverage. This guy was covering him there. They're man to man coverage. Now, the two white receivers just kind of cross. The inside receiver just comes down and goes to bends to the outside and then just outruns the defensive back. That was not very difficult to design, and it's, you know, it was. Perfectly executed. Perfectly executed. The ball was right on the money. One of the three great throws. I mean, he's made a lot of great throws, yes. but the three touchdowns, you couldn't have put them in any better spots than what he did. Now another fumble, and I think Oregon's got the ball. So now Mallet's having trouble even taking the snap from center, and the wheels are falling off the Michigan bus right now. The Ducks will take over with six minutes and eight seconds remaining in the ball game. A little bit of a hurry, Ryan trying to get yeah. into the pocket as quick as he could, and he forgot to take football with him. Those are the types of mistakes that happen when you have a freshman quarterback. Four turnovers today, fellas. Three in Oregon territory. Yeah. Can we see a new quarterback now? I, I would hope. Brady Leaf's coming in. Yeah. I would hope. You know, you know why like Greasy loves this offense? It was your leading receiver one year was Paul Warfield with 41 catches. Well, I don't know. I, yeah, I know. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't let you throw. You had those big guys in the backfield. Man. Here's Andre Crenshaw, the third tailback, and he's in the open. Crenshaw, side the 30, the 20, and inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line. Well, you can't tell a guy that doesn't get much of a chance to play to slow down, That's even right. though you're beating Michigan 39-7. Right. to you got to go play. That's right. It's our job to, to run. It's your job to stop us. Yep. That was Ron English you were looking at, folks, and he is not. He hasn't been happy for over a week. And he's not going to be happy after this one's over either. 604 yards of total offense. We're not done. Leaf gives it off inside. Crenshaw again. Crenshaw's down to the 13-yard line. Oregon for 39 points up, but you think about it, they had first and goal at the one and had to settle for a field goal one time. As you look at the game plan, well, they spread out the Wolverines for spread sure. Spread them out and run, I said, and uh, they've done that. 
And that's what Bob says, try to keep the defense off the field, which the offense didn't do. Right. Dixon, four touchdowns accounted for in his 368 yards. I was going to say, though, they had a turnover inside the Michigan 10. They had a loss on downs in this quarter at the two-yard line, and they had to settle for a field goal down here when they had first and goal in the first quarter. This thing could be 50 to something. And they missed the field goal. And they missed the field goal, exactly. Andre and we're under five minutes. Ball. Crenshaw getting some carries. There's the star Cameron of Taylor. the show today, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the smile tells it all. I'd go with Hart the other way with, with Michigan because he did play with Hart. He gained over 100 yards. Yeah. It's funny that statistic, the last two times about him rushing for 100 yards, that used to be such a great stat because at one time I think he was, it was 17 and 1 and then it became 17 and 2, now and then 17 and 3, now it's 17 and 4. When Mike rushes for 100 or more yards, so that thing's starting to fall backwards a little bit. Nothing backwards about what Oregon's done today. It's been all forwards. Leaf completes it out to Colvin, and he's brought down short of the first down as we check in with Bonnie. Well, Brad, remember when all those eyebrows were raised in Eugene when Dennis Dixon decided to play minor league ball for the Braves? Well, little did they know that football was still so much an everyday priority for him. He told me he recruited some of his baseball teammates to be stationary targets he could throw at them an hour and a half, two hours every day, so much so they actually had to wear batting gloves, and he had the playbook <laughs> on his computer, and he watched film every day, and you know what? I guess baseball didn't put a cramp in his football style. I, I don't it. think so, has it? As long as he's not a pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> he he saw was a pitcher and then throwing, and then throwing uh, footballs after practice. That wouldn't help. Daniel Padilla with the field goal, and it hit the uprights, much like what occurred earlier to Michigan. 3.25 to go. Score stays the same. All Ducks, 39-7 here in Ann Arbor. HD? HD. Thoughts? Lots of thoughts. LCD, plasma. Keep us around sound, head spinning. <laughs> Deep breath. Likes? Cowboy explosions, touchdown robots. Cooking, tear jerkers, crime dramas. Sing along musicals. This system. Hi. Nice. Mechanically inclined? Emergency room inclined. We install. High five. We pledge a complete home theater experience. And now get no interest financing for three years on home theaters $9.99 and up. That's HD done right. At Best Buy. Introducing the SUV that's bringing privilege to the people. The totally redesigned Saturn View. Excessively safe, excessively well-equipped, excessively well-priced. Rethink excess. Rethink American. Now get a low-mileage lease on a 2008 View XE starting at around $249 a month. Call for lease details. You are killing me, Birkwood. Hey, take the secret shortcut. I've never heard of the secret shortcut. Because it's a secret, Ham. Take it. Not bad, Birkwood. Taking this trail for now. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Not too bad. Or new car replacement. Your choice auto insurance. Only from Allstate. Are you in good hands? Monday, September 24th on ABC. The 25 greatest players in college football history. Presented by IBM. Coming in one week. IBM. Getting it done. Blue ribbon panel of former coaches, players, media members will reveal number 25 through number one over the course of the season. And the last week of the regular season is when you find out who they voted as the top college player of all time. Did you, did you vote in that? I believe I voted in that. A lot of times people don't ask my opinion. My opinion's Oregon's pretty darn good. You know, think about their schedule. They get this one out of the way. They're going to be favored in Eugene against Fresno State, and they'll be favored against Stanford. And they have Cal, USC, and Oregon State all at home. Wow. I mean, 
Yeah. Look out for these guys. Yes. They have to go to UCLA. Yep. I'm, I'm impressed with the Oregon Ducks, and I'm impressed with Mike Bellotti. Oh, oh boy. Another T-shirt out there. Now it's our house. The you know, ball came you know out what, at the end. You know what Bellotti did, and I think we mentioned a little bit earlier, but he kept him on West Coast time. He brought him in late last night, brought him over here, I think, at like at 7.30, 8 o'clock. It was just about getting dark, just walked into the stadium, just looked around. They went to bed at 1 o'clock. Went to bed at 1 o'clock, got him up at 10 o'clock. The game starts here at 3.30 Eastern time. So he kept him on Eastern time, and it seems like it's worked. He's, he says he does it every time he comes to the Midwest or to the East. Sounds just about like Paulie's uh, time frame, when he goes to bed, when he gets up. Yeah. Doesn't it? Close. He doesn't, he doesn't fall asleep. He passes out. <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes, too, in the morning. He, in the morning, he doesn't wake up. He comes, too. That's right. Mallet, look out in the pocket. Down he goes. Well, time to tell you about our Chevrolet players of the game. Today's Chevy players of the game. I don't think there was ever any doubt who was going to be Oregon's. That guy right there. Dennis Dixon, 292 yards in the air, three touchdowns, and then a great rushing touchdown. Mike Hart, who played with a lot of it and tried to play through pain again, 127 yards on the ground and 26 carries. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. One of the other things, too, is this, you know, look at what this Oregon defense did. Last week, they gave up 545 yards. Now, they've held Michigan, oh, that's an appearance. They held Michigan to seven points in this ballgame. I mean, that, that's a great turnaround, I think, for the defense. Well, they had... Oregon had four sacks, four takeaways today. Yeah, that's playing pretty darn well. Yeah. So you saw the penalty on the end of the punt. Michigan defensively has has had a history. Michigan, 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down, Oregon. Michigan's defense have had a history of having problems with mobile quarterbacks. Right. You go back to the Rose Bowl game with uh, Vince Young. Uh, the Ohio State game with uh, Troy, Smith. Troy Smith last week with Armani Edwards here today with this guy. the SUV that's bringing privilege to the people. The totally redesigned Saturn View. Excessively safe, excessively well-equipped, excessively well-priced. Rethink excess. Rethink American. Now get a low-mileage lease on a 2008 View XE starting at around $249 a month. Call for lease details. Kenny, uh, I need 50 pounds of roast beef. Sorry, Pat. We're all out. Oh, don't give me that. What, did your wife wolf it down for breakfast? <laughs> That came out wrong. Look, she's 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 not. She's look at me. I mean, we're probably we probably weigh this. The network you can trust. AT and T. Buy any phone and get up to four free. This is the place. Let's go. Open 24 hours. Common sense never sleeps. Two for one hot dogs with all the fixings. Now that's how you help people live the high life. Hey, how you doing, bud? There you go. This place is a mountain of goodness in a mixed up world. Thank you very much. Now come over here, I got something to show you. We got a surprise for you. Switch it on, boys. <laughs> Certified purveyors of the high life. That's you, buddy. Certified purveyors of the middle high life. Yeah. <laughs> Proof the world hasn't gone completely crazy. I'm Matt Weiner. This Sports Center Minute powered by Vizio. Roger Federer will play for his 12th Grand Slam singles title tomorrow at the U.S. Open. He bit Nikolai Davidenko and will face Novak Djokovic in the final. And coming up, the Chevy Rock and Roll 400 at Richmond NASCAR's final stop before the chase for the next Dell Cup. Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the wrong side. Three drivers racing for two spots. And Brad, that'll happen right after the Ducks are done doing donuts on the big house lawn. <laughs> exactly, Matt. Thank you. And that's what's happening right here at uh, Michigan Stadium. And there's not a packed house anymore. And boy, those guys are going to be some happy Ducks flying back to Oregon, aren't they? Here's a handoff on each side, and this is what's happened all day long. No matter who's carrying the ball, Alston this time. And he gets out for a big gain. 
clock winding down near a minute and a half. And Michigan will be 0-2 for the first time in a long, long We're done. And a very important uh, race to find out who is going to be in that chase field. 327 yards for Oregon on the ground today, guys. 300. <laughs> Man. Didn't matter if it was Dixon doing it or Stewart doing it or Johnson doing it or these some of these backup guys that are still doing it and doing it very, very well. Another first down down near the 35 yard line Remedy for uh, Remedy Alston. So Michigan has to try to put the coach got a got Duncan over there. I bet that's going to be the best wet shirt he's ever felt in a long time. Well, he did a heck of a job, and his team really performed today. Don't forget. Down the final uh, 45 seconds, and then we'll be going to the Chevy Rock and Roll 400 in Richmond. I don't know if there'll be any driving tonight that will be as good as the driving that Dennis Dixon did at quarterback for Oregon today. So Coach Carr has got to try to put the pieces. We said there were pieces to the puzzle, and they had to try to start putting them back together today. This piece didn't fit, but that guy did. What a game. What a game. Come to Michigan from way out west and go back west happy. Oregon rolls to a big win, and Michigan falls to 0-2. Something you just don't hear of, do you? Final score. Oregon 39, Michigan 7. The final score is Oregon. Final 39. score, 39-7. Michigan 7. Stay tuned for a NASCAR countdown from Richmond, Virginia. It is coming up next for Bob, Paul, and Bonnie. Brad Nestler saying so long from Ann Arbor. They are rich. They are ruthless. They're related. You children make me sick. And he's their only hope. No further questions. Dirty Sexy Money premieres Wednesday, September 26th. Part of Premier Week on ABC. Start here. The NASCAR Nextel Cup Series moves to ABC. With one race remaining to make it to the final 12, Junior, Harvick, and Kurt Busch battle for the last chase spots. The Chevy Rock and Roll 400 at Richmond. Tonight at 7 Eastern on ABC. I'm on it right now. What's that? Bill pay from Sterling lets me send money with the push of a button. Looks easy. Yep. So you better get going. Now? It's top of the ninth. Sorry, man, you're sent. Oh. Whatever. And please don't slam the... Thank you. One, two, free bill pay from Sterling, the perfect fit bank. Want more football? Call Quest and get Direct TV like your neighbors. Order a Quest bundle including Direct TV service, digital voice, and broadband for around $100 a month. And for just $10 more a month for 10 months with Direct TV's Choice Extra, you'll get up to 14 games every Sunday. Connecting fans to the game. Quest, that's our spirit of service. I gotta get out of here. Say, Palm, my lord. I don't think he's from around here. Really? Did you figure that out on your own? Hey, you watch it there, fancy pants. Fancy pants? I jumped for your neck. Hey! The movies are at McDonald's. Introducing Redbox, the best new release DVD rentals for just a dollar a night. Dinner and a movie just got a whole lot easier. K2, the spirit of the Northwest. A special presentation of ESPN on ABC. NASCAR Nextel Cup is back on ABC. Tonight, a short track slugfest in the final race for the chase. Who gets in? Who will be left out? It's the Chevy Rock and Roll 400 at Richmond International Raceway. They've survived dozens of grueling races, endured thousands of paint swapping miles. They face off in a final race to make the chase. Tonight, under the lights in Virginia, 
the Raceway of Richmond, this beloved track of NASCAR offers one last chance. The sun is setting and there's no time for blunder. The squeeze is on. The door is slamming in front of you. The proof is in the numbers and the math isn't adding up for Junior. It's going to take a stock car Hail Mary for number eight to make the final cut. To lead the chase there, you need to take care of business here first. Jeff Gordon is racing for his fifth title. Breathing down his neck is Jimmy Johnson looking to double dip as NASCAR champion. Second place might as well be last. So it's time to lay it down. For 12. All Clint Boyer and Martin Truex Jr. have to do is take the green flag and they're in, which means three drivers fighting for two spots. Kurt Busch will clinch a spot by finishing at least 36th. Kevin Harvick needs to finish 32nd or better. And then there's Dale Earnhardt Jr. with the Elvis paint job. He hasn't left the building yet. A long shot, but it can happen. And this is one of his best tracks. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Pit Studio here in the infield at Richmond International Raceway. I'm Susie Culver, along with our former NASCAR team owner, Brad Darty, and Rusty Wallace, who's won here six times. This place is an absolute favorite for drivers. Why? It's a three-quarter mile racetrack. It's really close quarters. This is true blue short track racing at its best right here. These folks can run right on the bottom of the track, the middle of the track, and on the top. And because of that, the drivers just love it. Now, Brad, aside from the drama of getting into the chase, there are a number of guys who are locked in. Yeah. All they really want to do then is win and build those bonus points. Well, yeah, you're exactly right. And in particular, you're talking about Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, and Tony Stewart. These guys are all almost comparable in wins with Jimmy Johnson having five. They need to close that gap. I know Tony Stewart wants to badly because he doesn't want to give Jimmy Johnson a 20-point lead, and Jeff doesn't want to give him a 10-point lead going into the chase. So these guys have their race within a race. And we'll explain those bonus points again in just a minute. But for now... All eyes on Dale Earnhardt Jr. There are a lot of scenarios, but we're going to try to keep it really simple. If Dale Jr. wins today and Kevin Harvick finishes 33rd or worse, Dale is in. A 34th place finish for Harvick, even if he leads a lap, would leave him one point shy of Jr. For little E, the year has overflowed with drama, beginning with his stepmother, Teresa, questioning her stepson's commitment. In December, she said, Junior will have to decide if he wants to be a NASCAR driver or a public personality, perhaps a prelude to the rocky season to come. I can't afford to run anything less than 110%. 